Perfect. Yo, what's up, everybody? I am Thomas Dope as Yolo. I am with my co-host, Marty O'Neill. What's up, folks? This is the Dope as Usual podcast. We're here to talk about life, drugs, promise, accomplishments. And today, we're talking about a whole lot of in-between and some drugs. Maybe some violence and some crime. <laughs> Maybe some journalism. <laughs> Guys, today's episode, I'm very excited. This is Trap Lore Ross. Thank you for being here. From across the water, you came out over here. Yeah, man, I'm over here. It's crazy. Like, it feels surreal. I just got here last night, and, like, I feel like I've stepped into the GTA lobby. Yep. Live in the flesh, bro. <laughs> I just I just spawned, and it's, there's all sorts going on, man. You guys were just telling me there's some app that I can use to find the local crimes. The best thing I ever said, do I have to be a citizen to get the citizen app? That was the best thing you ever said. I loved it. No, you don't, and you're gonna. it's going to blow your mind. So before we started, guys, we told them that uh, you, you asked about the 10 freeway. Mm. Like, it just burned. Like someone just I, burned a section of it down. I didn't know freeways could burn, to be honest. That's I said the me. same thing. It's concrete. I thought, did I see like a few months back, was there a freeway that collapsed or something like that? Was there a freeway oh, collapse? Oh, the one. Was, yeah. Is that what happened? Up by yes. Big Sur. That was like a landslide. Landslide. Damn. Didn't like people, a couple people died in that, right? Or, like, oh man, I don't know. Oh, it, it's it's terrifying driving that stretch because you're on the side, you're on a the edge of a mountain on the side of the ocean. Oh man. Imagine what Scotland looks like. <laughs> yeah, it's like that. Like you, it doesn't even feel like America anymore up no. there by Big Sur. Damn. That's why I get bummed out that that happened because it's been closed mm. for so long now. You can't go up there. You know, without taking the long way. You guys are gonna have no roads left soon, man. It's, it's gonna be back to dirt tracks it's and like buggies. Crazy and shit. dude, buggies. Damn, <laughs> like horse and cart Horses, type, yeah, type yeah. vibes out here, man. Wait, hold, real quick, you said before we started, you have sophisticated petty crime in the UK, mm -hmm. and over here we have GTA lobby style stuff. The differences that I see is, you remember, America is. Your curriculum at second grade is like our ninth. Yeah, yeah, it's not It's like true. That. America's very like, yo, just dig a ditch. What are you doing? Working McDonald's, bro. No education. So from here to there, you, you've you been here for one day. I've been here for one day, man. I have been here before, but like, you know what I'm saying? I feel like every time I come back here, society has collapsed just a little bit more. You know what I mean? Like, you guys have got freeways on fire now. I mean, what am I I'm seeing all kinds of like just crazy LA crime. I think last time I was here, there was some crazy like, Police shoot out on the highway or something like All I. Time. I see a guy getting like rammed off the road or something. Get robbed. You saw cops. that? Yeah, just, bro, crazy stuff going on, man. This place is it is legit. Like I understand why they set GTA mm -hmm. here. Yeah, because this is it. It's like they have the code to take all the stars off every couple seconds. Like, yo, shoot somebody. Oh, you're fine. No right. more stars. It's like you remember the old GTAs and you could do the cheat where it was like everybody's just trying to kill each other. Yes. It's like the, the right pedestrians will try to shoot you. Turn that shit on. Yeah, that's yeah. exactly what it is, bro. Like the homeless, like making all the homeless guys have weapons and they're <laughs> after you now or something. Uh, I mean, I don't get too crazy, but like two years ago, some guy got speared. Speared. A homeless guy made a spear and threw it through a guy's chest as he was walking threw to work it? and killed him. Like he made a spear to throw it. Killed this guy. I, imagine that, bro. You're walking to work and the, the homeless guy throws a spear at your chest. You got to just think, like, bro, I could not have seen this coming. Bro. No. Like, <laughs> how, could, how could you have avoided, bro? There's no, they, you don't go out the door and be like, I got to watch out for spears today. I got to make yeah. sure, like, I got my spear vest on. I it's kind know, of, it's kind of crazy because if you think about it, as you're dying, going for, for real? a spear, you see. Then you're just dead. It's like I got no point of reference for how to deal with this. No, uh, in, the, in the lexicon of like how to deal with situations, I was like, no one really prepared me for like spear attack. No, I feel like I'm ready. Like for you know, what I'm saying shooting, stabbings in the UK. We got like hella stabbings and so knife crime and stabbings. shit. Yeah, yeah, that's our thing. That's like I'd rather get shot than stab. Yeah, fact. And I know I'll die faster, but seeing that knife, like, oh no, is that because? Like guns are not allowed at all. Yeah, yeah, guns are way harder to get in the UK. Isn't like they're still crazy? around. They're still the, the thing that's crazy because obviously I cover a lot of like gang politics kind yeah. of stuff, both in the US and in the UK. And in the UK, it's like guns are still around, but it's like it's like an event. If someone pulls out a gun and shoots something up, mm. that's like international or well, national news. Like there was a shooting at like a funeral at the start of this year. Like someone did a drive by on a funeral. Like these two gangs were going at it, and like that's unprecedented. That was like you know, prime ministers on the news mm, talking about it, it should be. like crazy. Whereas you guys, if there's a shooting or a stabbing, every two seconds. You ain't, Joe Biden ain't gonna, ain't gonna make a comment on that. That's everyday yeah. shit. Basically what you're saying is we shit in the left, you guys. And we should have <laughs> just been like, be, be English, leave this land. And look what happened. We still got taxed. 
We still have taxes. You know what though? Your taxes are better though. U- UK taxes, UK taxes are, are pretty, worse? pretty harsh. We got crazy taxes. Yeah, if you're earning good money, man, UK, it's like 45%. I think over here is like 30 something. Cali is like the worst in America though, right? You guys got the most. I don't yeah. know what it works out at. Cause I was, I was kind of thinking like, maybe I should move to Miami and like cut my taxes a little. It's something like 30, 30% or 27 or something in Miami. Mm-hmm. English, English. 45% so bro. More. What's the equivalent of like minimum wage in UK? I think it's like, oh man, I forget. I, I think it's something like 12 pounds an hour. It's higher. I think it's higher than it is, but isn't California in minimum wage 16. higher? 16, 20, 20, yeah, 12 yeah. pounds an hour sounds crazy. That's probably like 14 bucks or something. Yeah, pounds. And the euro is uh, <laughs> almost to the dollar right now. Yeah, we don't have the euro, so we got the pound still. Oh, the pound, we sorry, never, sorry. We, we right, never joined right. Europe. We were always like skeptical and like, you nah, we don't fuck with that. You guys are just the top of the food chain. over like, no, no, no. Yeah, you want to leave? Go fucking make it across the ocean. No, Bro. we have different money here. Like, mm. That's fucking crazy. Mm. Because we don't trust Europe. This is the thing about British people is we we kind of see ourselves as better than Europeans, and kinda, yeah. we kind of don't trust them. Like the like English people hate the French. Basically, like we don't we don't really rock with the French. So mm-hmm. it's kind of like they have all the they were doing all the Euro and the Germans, and we were just kind of like nah, leave us out of that. And then it all kind of went to shit. So we were, we made the right move in the end. Mm. Yeah, you guys serve hell of French food in England though. Kind of, yeah, but like English food sucks. You know, it's notorious. I heard. Like beige, flavorless, oh. like mashed potatoes. I mean. Mm. I got a soft spot for English food because it's like very nourishing and like, I don't know, the food in America is lit, but you guys just, too you guys, it's shit. way too much, bro. Those portions here, it's like two meals in the UK. Mm-hmm. It's crazy, bro. I put on a hell of weight when I come here. Really? So it's coming, bro. I'm, I'm, excited, bro. I'm, I'm ready to just eat for like three, four days. Straight. How long are you here for? Only for like three, four days. Oh, so you, the whole time you're here, you're going to eat. Okay, I'm gotcha. eating nonstop, bro, literally. I'm going to try and like put on a few pounds. You know what I'm saying? Was it like Robert De Niro in, or was it Raging Bull? Oh I'm damn! To, what a, a little reference. What about Robert De Niro in Cape Fear, all prisoned out and shredded? That's gonna be me when I get back to the UK. Bro. <laughs> back on the UK food, I'm about to lose all the weight. Uh, last random American English question because you know we're fucking dumb. But how old are you? I'm thirty. Thirty. Maybe not. One of my favorite shows ever. I ask everybody. I only have like five homies from the UK, and I I hound them the first time I talk to them. The show absolutely fabulous. Do you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> yeah. One of my favorite shows ever. <laughs> That's the, not what I was expecting you to That's say. That's one of my favorite shows <laughs> of all a, time. That was a deep I cut. love that show so much. Since I was a child, I've been watching it. And where have you watched that in America? I have it. You have it like the DVD, and it's on, it's on Netflix now. Damn. The whole series on Netflix and the movies. I've never been asked by an American about Abs Ab- so, Fab. That's okay. crazy. Oh, so Ab Fab. So Ab you Fab, you crazy. know what it is? That's yeah, what the nickname is. All right, I grew up on that shit. That's like what my mum used to watch and shit when I was a kid. Yeah, yeah. She used to love that. I used to see a few episodes. That's every single that's one of them, actually. I thought you was going to say like the British office or like that shit's peep show or something. I'm sorry, but I don't like that show. The yeah. office America is the only office for me. I tried to watch it. Went, oh, so bland office. Sick. <laughs> bland office. You it's, gotta, like, it's like our food. Our office is like yeah, our food. It's like, it works. You're going to laugh. Isn't uh-huh. Shameless kind of like that too? Yeah, there is a we UK the Shameless. shameless we get yeah. the dirty grimy yeah. shit over here. You know what? I feel though, I know Americans don't rock with the UK office like that, but I feel it's, it's like the perfect example of like how British humor is different to the US humor. Mm. Like the, the cringe, embarrassing, like socially awkward UK, like that is how British people feel and express themselves. And then like, you know, the way you guys got like Michael Scott and it's kind of like goofy. And I feel it's just like the perfect example of the difference between US and UK humor. Oh, 100%. You, know? you have one kid that's normal, one ADHD kid, mm-hmm. and we're America over here. And then you got what's 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 the, what's the Russ uh, Ricky Gervais? Yeah, yeah, that's him. You know, Michael Scott is the more sophisticated. I'll make you laugh mm. at a nice restaurant, and then Michael Scott's at Burger King, losing his mind. I get it. You guys are smarter than us. <laughs> that's that's we, really all. It is. Here's what I think because I love America, and I, I've always seen myself as kind of like a, a, a honorary American because I, I think British people think they're smarter than Americans, but I feel like Americans are smarter, but not book smart, but like. Maybe not street smart, but just like in getting shit done. Just like Americans are like so dumb, they're smart. I feel you got that thing where you just like you just you just throw yourself at life and just make shit happen. Whereas English people, we think we're so smart, but we're so reserved. Like we think we're smarter than the program. You know, what I'm trying to say okay. Like English people, I feel like think they're so smart that they don't got to do anything, and then like miss an opportunity if that makes mm-hmm. sense. Yeah, point. no, yeah. I, I agree. Well, I don't know anything. I agree with the American side, at least for me. <laughs> I just, I just, last thing, I always talk about the UK thing because when I was a kid, I'm I'm an American. Mm. Like when I was a kid, like America, hell yeah. When I found, as a kid, when I found Tom Jones was not American, he was English. I'm like, are you kidding me? Led Zeppelin, <laughs> don't talk like that. And I heard Robert Plant, I'm like, what? 
shit. And then Christian Bale was like, I'll be Batman. And then he put his regular accent. I'm like, what is happening <laughs> to our country yeah. where we're not cool anymore? That is sad. It's crazy. Then uh, how about Terminator? Nah, let's get this full from Austria. Like, shit, the dude. Sons of Anarchy gangster, dude. Yeah, all of our classics are just like, <laughs> oh, they're not us. Sick. But, but you know what's funny? I feel like British people have done really well at infiltrating America with acting, oh, singing, man, everything. But never rapping. You guys do not rock with our rappers, bro. You can't understand what they're saying. Never works. Didn't they just show we, you? We just did this I, before you got here. <laughs> randomly, I, I've, been, I've been hearing some. Uh, I met up with this dude. Um, he's a UK rapper. He ah, apparently he's famous as shit. I don't know. He's just getting some weed. A long time ago, Storm. Storm Z. Storm Z. Yeah, yeah he's, Storm he's Z. huge, bro. He's one of the one of the goats in the UK. Mm. That's what they told me. I'm like, all right, I don't know what the fuck he's saying. <laughs> yeah, no, but no, I can't no, understand no. this person. So I know that, and I know um, that Central C kid, he's mm -hmm. really, really popping. That's the guy I just showed you yeah, yeah, that yeah. made me laugh. Sure was sick. And I, I said, like, you don't realize how different the languages are to hear <sighs> rap. That's the same yeah, language. You got to really slow down and try to really, like, listen to what the fuck they're saying. It's those Fs. Yeah. The, T, the TH for the F. But you know what really bugs me out is, like, you guys just, can't, you throw on some UK rap, you guys can't understand it. But you throw on Ed Sheeran and you guys are picking up every word. That's the weird thing. Ed Sheeran can break through. I I was just talking about him the other day. I I don't I, I song play. Go, who is that? I'm like the, that's the red guy. Mm. He sings like that. Mm. I had no idea. He's the goat man. He's like the, he's, he's English. Yeah, yeah, British guy. Yeah, yeah. That's the crazy thing. It's like he's probably been the most one, probably the most successful British artist of like the last five dude, ten I years. He was mm. the South and like he was like a Southern dude. Really? I didn't. I don't. I don't really listen to. Uh, Mainstream music, I yeah, guess you would say. It. So Ed Sheeran, he's like a singer. I just recently found out who the fucking guy was recently, mm -hmm. and I just found out Taylor Swift was famous six months ago. Mm. <laughs> so that kind of puts you in like where I'm at in perspective. Yeah. yeah, Ed Sheeran's a funny one because like in the UK, he's got a lot of clout in the rap scene because he's done a couple of these like little albums where he'll do a little five track album and he'll have a rapper on each track and kind of like blow up some of the uk guys so he's kind of really beloved in the rap scene in the uk no like he's it's the sort of artist you would think like oh he's mainstream people don't rock with him but like people love ed sheeran bro like the most street gangster like gang affiliated rappers in the uk will be rocking hanging out with ed sheeran i saw ed sheeran and kodak black hanging out and i was yeah. like why it makes what is it's crazy right there's this rapper in the uk called queng face i mean you wouldn't have heard of him but he's like from Peckham, which is like very dangerous, serious area of London. Like he's in, doing like five years in jail now. But like there was just some crazy, there was just some random day where like Ed Sheeran was just like in the trap with Queng Face, like mm -hmm. super dangerous rapper that you would never think Ed Sheeran would be hanging out with. And they're just like chilling in like the bando. It's just like <laughs> Ed Sheeran is a, certified everywhere. I thought it was Photoshop when I saw him with Kodak, but I'm like, why? Who thought of this? Did you ever see Michael right. Jackson with the Crips? The yeah. <laughs> yeah. Throwing up the C. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was throwing up the C for children though. I think. Oh. <laughs> that was a deep, deep burn. I love the multiple genre burn right there. Oh, you smoke? I do, yeah. Do you want to smoke or are you good? I'll smoke a little something. I hey. want to make sure the conversation's still at high it's level. It's up to you. I'm, I'm just going to bust something. these out for a minute. I, I got to say, so in the UK, like the weed game is very basic it's like primitive compared to what you guys yeah. got like we got medical cannabis but it's very early stage and there's not much available so you guys are like the scientists you got all the next level stuff so you tell me about what you guys got man everything this you looks crazy think of this is just from our one of our sponsors exotics we um, haven't tried these yet the these last are tip this is yeah. crazy these are brand new brand new haven't tried these ones yet so we will see let's see this um, is all fully legal right i'm not, yeah, I'm yeah. not breaking no <laughs> local laws i don't want to be seen on camera doing anything illegal no 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 this grab those pounds right there no i'm just kidding, yeah. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I was ready. I was like, let's go. It's funny. I was going to bring a bunch of them to the TC to take some pictures. And I was like, I don't feel like carrying that right now. Just for the. That would be a cool set piece. Right? It's a bunch like, of uh, pounds. What are they called? Those uh, bean points. bags? Like oh, bean bag pounds go. in the corner? Just pounds. What, what does like a pound. Because I see rappers holding the big bag, the pounds pound. and stuff. But like, what does a pound cost? I don't even know. Like, that's oh. a whole nother level to me. What year? Five years ago before like it crashed, a pound could be. YouTube, we're speaking in UK yeah, money in here. U, yeah, this is 18 UK money. or... Thousands. No, 1800 or okay. 4K. Okay. But now it's like the super, super, super fires are 1100 bucks right now because it's it's crashed. But some, wow. there's still a couple strains out there for 10K a P, like 10K mm. right across the board. No breaks, no nothing. There's stuff for 9K, for 8K. It's all the boutique. It's like, yo, this is Louis Vuitton. Oh, this is Burberry. All right, this is fucking Hurley. Yeah, <laughs> but we got you the know? goofy like federal law than the different mm. state laws. Yeah, so his company has kind of found a way to kind of go fifty states with it now, which is yeah. brand wow, new. Nice. Yeah, THCA. What um, 
This is something I've always been curious about because I do, I've semi followed it. Like I always understood it's like, it's legal, nice one. It's legal in the States, but it's federally illegal. And like, there was a whole thing where it's like, if you had a dispensary, you had to just deal in cash or something for a bit. Like, is that all changed now? Everything is, it's like this all the time. Yeah. Like, you're in trouble. I didn't get in trouble for that. Like, yo, you got in trouble for that. I didn't get in trouble for that. You Mm. pay taxes. I didn't pay those taxes. Mm. It's such a gray area right now that everyone's just, imagine this. There's a riot and everyone's looting. Yeah. And some people aren't because they don't want to get in trouble. Mm. Those are probably the legal companies. And everybody else is just fucking looting. It's it's a very weird time in the weed. It's never been like this ever. Yeah, so. it's. I, I I always been fascinated just in it, just uh, mainly because of its uh, proximity to rap music. To be honest, because yeah. like for me, just I'm obsessed with rap. Anything rap, I'm interested in. Like even as a kid, like before I really knew what was going on, because I've been listening to rap since I was like five, six years old. I just always was curious, like, what is this weed thing that all these rappers are always oh, smoking shit. and shit? So it's like, but I like weed, but I would say that, like, I'm not necessarily the biggest connoisseur. Like, I kind of just quite happy smoking mid and just, mm-hmm. I don't just really, I don't even know what I got, but like. Yeah. Is weed and music combined? Do you like kick back smoke and like that thousand of music? That's how it is for me. Yeah, for sure. Watching, watching stuff. I mean, the funny thing with me is it's like, I, I work a lot. I like, I'm a bit of a workaholic. Like to make like a three hour documentary on someone, like that is just weeks of me sat there just watching loads of interviews, listening to albums, making notes. Like for me, I find it's actually quite productive if I, if I smoke, I usually have vape, but like vape, sit, lock in and watch like, you know, a few, three, four hours of rap interviews and like work and like make notes and like analyze what's going on. Mm-hmm. I just find like the weed really helps with that. Personally. Yeah, of course. Like thousand focus. So you're born where at? We should start that. I was born at a place called Croydon, which is like just south of London, basically. There's always like this big debate on like, is Croydon actually London or not? Like a lot of people say it isn't. Like it's technically in Surrey, but it's also, it's like, it's close to London. It's got the set. It's culturally, it's basically London. I mean, it's kind of, it's kind of known as like a bit of a rough area, sort of south of London. There's like a lot of gangs and stuff. But I was born there. Uh, I moved on as about five or six to a place called Bognor Regis, which you'd have never heard of. But it's basically like a very small, poor seaside town, like in the south of England. And basically it's the place where like, like, I'll keep it real. It's not very diverse. Like you wouldn't, growing up, I didn't see many black people, basically. But I had older brothers that kind of grew up more in London and I was just super into hip hop. So like, I was just obsessed with music and hip hop and Eminem and Jay-Z and 50 Cent. When I was a kid, like my parents used to like not want me listening to the stuff. So they would like, you know, hide my CDs and stuff like that. And I would just be like secretly listening to the Jay-Z, the blueprint and stuff like that. Um, But I was living in this very boring, poor, like nothing ever going on, no rap music, no shows, no nothing kind of place. Um, And then when I was 18, I moved back to London to go to university and just kind of like, reconnected with hip hop, started going to hip hop shows, like filming music videos for local rappers, like getting back into this stuff that I loved. Um, and then, yeah, eventually, man, I was doing rap videos and I was doing stand up comedy for a little bit. Yeah, I saw, I saw a piece of that. Yeah. 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 I was doing stand up just for a little bit. Like the stand up comedy circuit in London's kind of lit. So it's like, what got you into that? I just always loved comedy. I mean, I used to love like my main things I was into was like comedy and rap music. So growing up, I'd be like listening to Eminem, listening to 50 Cent, watching Ricky Gervais, watching The Office, uh, people like Jimmy Carr, just stand-ups that I love. Guys, funny. And so I, I kind of got into stand-up. Um, I always wanted to be a rapper as well, though. Like, I used to rap. I used to make little music videos and do stand-up. I was just kind of being creative, doing all this stuff. Um, and then eventually YouTube kind of took off for me, and I just was able to go all in on that. But, like, it was a very up-and-down sort of roundabout journey to get there. Did you do stand-up as an in- for an income? No, I never got paid to do stand-up. Just trying to do it because you like it. Yeah, I kind of like, I had a few friends that were like really active. Uh, some of them are still going, like really active UK stand-up comedians. Like a good friend of mine, this guy called Ali Woods, who's like really blown up a lot this year on social media doing stand-up. He was like a friend of mine in the circuit and we would go and do open mics together and stuff like that. And just going, I'd always just watch a lot of comedy, like go to open mics. Like it was just a fun little scene to be in, but also I, I felt like it's like you really have to, um, you really have to grind to get anywhere with it. Like a lot of people, they'll say like, if you want to make it in stand up in the UK, you basically got to be comfortable making no money for like 10 years. Mm. I'll keep it real. I wasn't trying to make no money for 10 yeah. years. So I kind of was like really on the YouTube thing. So I was doing like stand up and sketch comedy on YouTube. Like I was trying to do the Andrew Schultz thing oh. back in the day, doing like stand up and putting it on my channel and stuff. But it didn't really pop. Like I did a few like comedy sketches and like me and my homies that did stand up would do like sketch comedy on YouTube together. 
But eventually it was the hip hop stuff, like the hip hop stories and the history that kind of took off. But I try, I feel like I tried everything, man, to try and get on on YouTube. Like I did it, I started doing YouTube in 2015. I was doing like reaction videos, sketches, and literally I grinded for like four years. Didn't get anywhere. I had like 200 subs after four years. Oh, wow. Shit didn't go anywhere. And then my homie basically said to me, he's like, you love hip hop. You love all this stuff. Why don't you do some hip hop videos? And I said to him, I was like, bro, no one wants to hear a white guy from Bogner talking about hip hop. And he was like, just give it a go. And like, turns out they did. And like, it just took off, bro. As soon as I started doing the hip hop history, I think people could really see my enthusiasm and my knowledge for the topic. And then I think that is what caused it to blow up because it was like, people looked to me and they'd be like, bro, this guy don't know shit about hip hop. And then I start speaking and they're like, mm -hmm. oh, actually like kind of does. And I feel like that's always been like my USP because it's like, I'm not the typical, you know, I'm not the typical person you would look at and be like, this guy knows a lot about rap, yeah. but then I actually do. Mm -hmm. I actually stand on the knowledge and the topics yeah. that I talk about. So yeah, it's been, it's been a blessing, man. I'm like grateful to have gotten so, to this point. So that transition was purely out of a friend going, Hey, why don't you just try it? Yeah, man. It's my friend, uh, ordinary things. He's another YouTuber who's, who's really popping. And, uh, yeah, you know, it was kind of like, we were both just experimenting with YouTube, trying to make it work. Like he did, um, he was doing like, like movie, not reviews, but like movie analysis, like, yeah, uh, breakdowns, video stuff. essay type things. And then he was like, oh, I want to do more comedy with like history on YouTube. So he switched it up, started doing videos on like all sorts of different, just like random history of interesting things. Like he just did a big video on like satellites and like SpaceX and stuff like that. Just like interesting stuff with kind of jokes and sketches and stuff. But yeah, he encouraged me. He was like, do, do some hip hop stories. Like if you see any of my old stuff, I'm trying to do more of the comedy. Like I'm kind of roasting rappers and like <laughs> doing little skits and yeah. stuff. Like I did a video where, um, what did I do? I used to do like fake commercials for rappers. Like I did like a, a fake the baby Walmart commercial because you know shot guy. Yeah. So I did like a Walmart commercial featuring the baby and like put a bunch of like footage of the baby with a bunch of like Walmart music and shit like that. Or like I did a, I did like a commercial like you know Drake with the whole thing when Pusha T exposed him for having this baby with the porn star. Um, I did like a fake commercial for like Drake bought this really expensive watch that has I don't know if you've ever seen this. Drake basically bought this watch for like 750k. It's like an erotic Richard Mill that's got like sex, sexy shit on the watch. Mm -hmm. So I made like a fake commercial that was like Drake's for watch one. for like him knocking up this porn star basically. <laughs> so I was doing a lot more like funny comedy hip hop skits like back in the day. Um, and that stuff just slowly took off, man. But like as time's gone on, as I've got into more like the gangster, the drill breakdowns, I've started to take things a lot more seriously. I don't really make jokes or make light of these situations anymore unless I'm doing something that's like, you know, a little bit more of like a gossip kind of thing. Like, I think a lot of people think that I just cover like gangster stuff, but I still do a lot of like celebrity. Like I did the Eminem and Kim kind of whole breakdown of their marriage and how that affected M's career. Uh, even like the Kim and Kanye, like marriage and divorce. Did like a long video on like their sort of rise and fall and the breakup. So like I cover a lot of different things, but it's like, it's the gang stuff and the drill stuff that obviously like right now, gangster rap and drill is just like, everyone's trying to learn about it. And like, I've kind of become the guy for that stuff. Which, Which is like wild, not yeah. even in the damn country. You, you know what I'm saying, right? Like yeah. right now, the best weed I've I've got is from a guy from London. No, moved out here from, he's the, grown, from UK. He, he moved over here. He's been growing for years. Damn, just mm -hmm. John's homie. It's like this is the best weed in California. You're not even from here. This is insane to me. I mean, it doesn't matter where you're from. Just so wild that uh -huh. a, such an American culture, California culture thing is like you're from where? Shit, uh -huh. and I'm like yo, this drill music, this crowd, who's who's covering it? <laughs> Where are you from? It's just, it's such an odd, like you said, you don't expect it at the very beginning. I think it helps me. Like it, it's funny. For sure. Because when I, when I started, I kind of felt like I was like, ah, oh, this ain't going to work. Like no one's going to want a British guy talking about this stuff. And it just so happens. It's kind of like a lot of people say to me, it's like, yo, you're like the BBC for like 100%. drill music mm. and shit like that. Mm -hmm. And it's like now in hindsight, it's like, oh, actually it makes so much sense because like Drill music, if you're not, it's going to sound dumb the way I'm saying this, but it's like if you're not from the streets or if you're not familiar with, I guess, drill culture or like rap music culture, it's really hard for you to understand what's going on. Like if you throw on King Von album, you're not really going to understand what's really being said. So it's like, I feel like people that are new to the genre or people that want to discover these artists, like they kind of need someone like me to break it down in very plain English and be like, 100%. this is the area that these people, the, you know, Vaughn is from or like these drill rappers are from or whatever. And then like, you know, this is the music, like this is what we're talking about in the music. Like this is how it affects actually the history and the real life of what's gone on. And I think like, I really hope 
Like some of the best comments I get are when people say like, oh, I never listened to this artist or Vaughn or Dirk before, but I watched your video and I kind of got what it was all about. And now I love mm. their music. Like converting people to fans of the rappers that I'm fans of, like that gives me a lot awesome. of fulfillment. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. Learning the story before you hear the music is totally different. Yeah, because I think in a lot of ways, like sometimes it's like you need to know even just a little backstory to really appreciate what's going on in the music. 100%. I, I hear like say, it's just sad, but you hear a rapper getting killed. If you don't know who it is, you look it up. Go, this fool's music's tight. Damn, how come he's not more popular? And then they get they blow the fuck up. But three months ago, if I watched a video that you did about like, oh, this fool's been doing this for this long. Oh shit, he's gonna blow. And that's how you when a superstar pops, they go, since when? Mm. Never even heard of the guy. Little do you know, he's got twelve gold, you know, mixtapes yeah, 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 or exactly. two videos you've done on him. Yeah. Shit like that. Could because I told Marty all the time, I don't know a lot about the a lot about newer music i'm very i know what i like I, and that's it if it's i don't i mean gangster music's dope and shit but a lot of the shit now is more like yo i robbed this guy i said his real name then he put a diss track on these diss tracks are now like premeditated murder tracks mm -hmm. they're not diss tracks anymore they're evidence they're evidence and they're yeah. proof like you said you were gonna shoot him on the 12th he got killed on the 12th like i mean young thug is in jail right now over this shit dude mm -hmm. So I feel like a lot of the music now, I'm more like, this is so evil. You, you, oh, shit. you know what? I think something really interesting has happened and I, I don't really hear anyone else talking about it. Whereas like, I feel it, true crime content got really popular in the last mm -hmm. few years, especially mm -hmm. on YouTube, like the murder videos, the sort of like police interrogation videos. And I think that actually like, there's something really weird has happened recently where it's like, you've got these drill rappers that are really doing the crimes they're talking about. And I think you're getting people that are like true crime fans attracted to drill music because it's kind of like it's gangster rap meets real life true crime stories Fuck, you're not wrong. and i think that it's like it's really supercharged this this space and drill music and in a way it's sad because obviously behind the music there's a lot of sad stories and people losing their lives and people getting robbed and hurt which i don't condone but at the same time like the music's happening it's out there we can't ignore it and pretend it's not happening so we should be able to like analyze it and understand it even like the thug thing's interesting because it's kind of like I did a thug sort of a, a YSL sort of gang video like a few months before that indictment dropped. Oh, shit. And like a lot of people were like, oh, you know, you it's your fault. Like you snitch. But like, bro, these indictments, that takes years. They've been they've been looking at thug. Yeah. But um, and you found the shit. It's on the Internet. That's, that's ex exactly <laughs> it. Like, it's already there. It's on their own. It's on their own social media. But like now it's like these songs are getting used. And it's it's crazy really when you look at it and you look at some of these lyrics and thugs talking about we shot at his mom and now he no longer mentions me. And like moms were really getting shot like that. That was a real thing. Like that lyric is that mm -hmm. actually something that happened. And it's kind of like, you know, whether or not you think lyrics shouldn't be used in court and in testimony, it's like those lyrics exist. We all heard what he yeah. said and we all can look up like this shooting actually happened. And it's this, it's sort of like this has never really happened in rap music before. Like there's been a lot of different eras of gangster rap, whether you want to go all the way back to like Ice T and NWA or even up to like 50 Cent. Mm -hmm. But it was like 50 Cent's appeal was always like, yo, 50 is real. He really got shot nine times and lived. And like 50's got that lyric. It's thing with 50, it was always ambiguous. He never really named the names. Like he had that lyric where he's like, the guy that shot me, he got hit like I got yeah, hit, yeah, but he ain't fucking, fucking breathing. Yeah. But he didn't say he got hit at 9 p.m. <laughs> in the leg. Steve Smith, and he lives at 654. You know what I mean? And nowadays it really is like that of like rappers will be talking about the actual street, whether it's they're saying like fuck 63rd, or even in the UK, there's a couple rappers that are like, they, they have to censor their lyrics now, but a lot of them will be like, yo, I caught him on this street. Well, there's a, there's a rapper in the UK that did like, yeah, I did a drill on my birthday. Mm. And it's like, bro, the feds are gonna look up your birthday and like see the drill that went down. Like, <sighs> don't say that. Like, you know what I mean? I, I'm a big advocate of like, don't snitch on yourself. Like if I had any advice for rappers, like I don't condone crimes, but if you are doing crimes, sh sh keep that to yourself, honestly. Mm -hmm. Like come up with a fake crime to rap about mm -hmm. and the real crime. Adjacent. Throw them off the throw them off the scent. You should rap about a bunch of shit that never happened. Hundred percent. Like when I tell stories about moving hella packs, go. All right, make up a fake city. All right, that's the other side of the state. Uh, all right, yeah. different year. It's Done. Let's go. That's yeah. so strict on snitching, but we're on here just talking about, about this it. shit. It's weird. Yo, Marty, that is a great <laughs> fucking point. Nobody wants to snitch, but you're doing it to yourself. I mean, that's like a blatantly blaring, obvious, weird thing. Yeah, there, there's something kind of messed up because I get a lot of hate when people are like, "Yo, you're snitching." And it's like, bro, I'm reading 
<laughs> like Vaughn's lyrics. And it's like, let's be real. Like, it's unfortunate, but like these dudes often are self snitching, like telling on themselves and admitting to stuff that they've done. Like with Thug, it's like, bro, he shouldn't have got on the mic and talked about shooting at someone's mum. He's huge. That happened. You're that He's, big. Yeah, le legit. And I, f I feel like he got to the point where he felt he was so big that it's just, mm. they would never come back for him. And it, it just goes to show you, I feel like this particular case, let's see how the court trial goes, but it's like, it just goes to show that the, the, feds or the state or whatever you want to call it like there's no time limit and the bigger you are and the more famous you are the more of a trophy you are to the feds exactly mm. a trophy is exactly because mm. when you're a cop and you're a little bitch and mm. you're trying to take down these fools you want that guy mm. every movie they take down the mafia guy the cop goes i finally got you and what happens he goes home and nothing changed yeah. so that's like his biggest accomplishment of his life you think they don't want to i'm the guy that took down young thug mm -hmm. he loves that as he plays his music mm -hmm. like he loves that fucking <laughs> Trophy. What's up, guys? Got a drop off from Exotics. I'm hyped. You already know Exotics from many of our videos. You've seen them on our social media. Exotics is a premium cannabis company. 100% white ash, burns clean, everything doesn't hurt my throat. Everything is fire. So, right here in abundance, we have the grape guava. We've gone over it many times. And here we have the blue guava. We've been smoking this for weeks. This is brand new, just got dropped off. We just smoked that shit out of them. This is the new pre rolls from Exotics. These are called Next Level Roll Up two pack two joints come in here both 1.5 grams so there's three grams of rolled up weed in this little box every strain that they have everything they offer they have a complete full breakdown on zotics 420.com remember zotics is a legal brand so you can go into stores and buy this and for everyone out there that doesn't feel like getting up and maybe they want to get it delivered right now you can go to distrocalifornia.com that is 100 legal there's a site for delivery service that will deliver anything you see that zotics carries or makes they have it on that website that can be delivered to you distro california.com just use our code yola so i'm gonna finish this joint let's get back to this episode thank you so much have a dope ass day Damn. give me this roach <laughs> <laughs> hey what's up guys we just want to take a moment to talk about one of our sponsors this is board hash you've seen them on our instagram you've seen them on my story my snapchat my twitter you've seen us smoking these you see marty eating the shit out of the edibles go to their instagram that's board hash b-o-r-e-d-h-a-s-h -H. that's board hash they have a telegram they're a licensed company this is not a trapping it out kind of place but if you want to check out for information where they're carried where you can buy remember go to their instagram they have their links there board hash is 100 made from live resin fresh frozen for everyone out there that likes vaporizers that likes pens that likes carts this is something for you on the rec market this one right here is GMO. Here's Gary Payton. This, this is Lemon Cherry Gelato. Over here, we got Wedding Cake. It's endless. Go ahead and check out their Instagram. That's Board Hash. Everyone that wants to check out where they're available and how you can get them. And remember, guys, this is a brand new company coming to the rec market. My friend, my personal homie, manufactures and produces everything for this brand. If you smoke live resin pens, maybe try Board Hash. You might fall in love with it like this guy over here is smoking 12 a day. So guys, remember, Board Hash on Instagram. Go ahead and check them out. Leave a comment. Drop a like. Drop a follow. Support the brands that support us. Thank you so much. Back to the episode are you getting ever like inside sources or is it basically all just info that you find off the internet that you're using for your research i i've always made a conscious effort to just stick with the online research like i've always felt like my skill like my superpower is like i'm very very good when it comes to like finding hidden info like i know all sorts of techniques of like using google in a way where you can find stuff that maybe isn't always going to come up on the the normal search or like Things like Twitter advanced search, like finding tweets that are like hidden or deleted tweets or like tweets. If you've got somebody that's just tweeted millions of tweets, like narrowing down and finding tweets that are relevant, stuff like that. So I personally have always taken the opinion of like, I don't really want to get inside sources because I'm not, I'm genuinely not a snitch. Like I'm not trying to expose people. I'm not trying to get inside info from like someone's baby moms who is going to expose somebody like my the whole point of my videos is they're meant to be like a perfect collection of just all the info that's out okay. there about You're taking the topic three four hours mm. at a time these to are break documentaries the down, yeah. like a true like storyteller would like we're going to analyze everything here and just lay it all out at once and it's easy yeah. to follow that's that's, that, that's why i like it that's really what i aim for is like I really want to help people understand just like everything there is to know on a topic and it's not necessarily about like trying to sensationalize it or anything like that but it's like i just want to tell the story in a way that you're going to remember it and that you're going to actually understand and appreciate like what was really going on in a certain situation and like 
you know, the videos have just gotten longer and longer. And I, I've tried to like push myself and be more ambitious about like the ideas I take on, like doing the like the six hour young boy video. It's like I six hours. Six hour I did on Young Boy, yeah. But it's like I felt like I was looking into Young Boy and I was like, bro, this guy's life and his story is so complicated. No one's ever really, ever properly broken it down. And I feel like Young Boy is such a misunderstood artist that I was like, bro, I'm just gonna I didn't say I'm gonna do a six hour video, but I just said like I'm gonna tell the whole story. I'm gonna tell like every beef, every album. Like I wanna tell the story behind every album. I wanna tell like when, cause the guy releases loads of music. Like I think a lot of people think like young boy, oh, he just shits out music and don't, he just floods the market with music and don't really think about it. But like the guy's stuck at home on house arrest for like years and years. He's got nothing to do but record. And, like every album is kind of telling a different story about where he is in his what? life at that, mm -hmm. that moment. Mm -hmm. And it's like, no one ever really broke that down. So it happened to take me six hours to break it all down. But this guy's got dozens of albums. And I was like, I wanna leave no stone unturned. I wanna tell every beef, every album, every relationship, every child, every murder that took place, like just everything about this guy's career. And I want it all in one video. Like I don't wanna be, I don't like splitting videos up and do a part mm -hmm. one. I just wanna do like, yo, if you ever wanted to know anything about Young Boy, it's in this video, ain't nothing we missed really. Sums up, it's like the tale of the tape. Mm. From yeah, UFC, exactly. like this is exactly, yeah, exactly everything you need to know about the guy. Go listen to his music. Yeah, and I'm, that's the thing, bro. Is like, I'm a huge fan. Like all of the artists that I cover, like I couldn't sit there for like a month or two months just researching one artist if I didn't love them and love their music. Like, mm -hmm. bro, I'm a super fan. Like all the artists I cover, all the stories and situations, like I'm fanatic about them. Like I love Young Boy's music. I love Von's music. Like I love Lil Durk's music. I'm obsessed. So like any way that I can like help people enjoy the music, like I'm hyped, like that's a huge positive for me. So. What's the overall feedback band from the world? I uh, mean, I, I gotta be honest, man. You know, I really appreciate the love that I get about the videos. Cause like people do really appreciate the effort that goes in and they do really see it. Like I, I never feel like I drop a video and feel underappreciated. Like I always see hella comments of people are just like, yo, you really went over and above. And like, mm -hmm. you're, you're making content in a way that no one ever, no one else does or no one else mm -hmm. has. And like, that's what I'm trying to do. Like when I tackle a project, like I'm trying to say like, cause there's a couple of videos about young boy that are a couple hours long and I'm looking at them and I'm like, I got to do something different. I got to do something bigger and better. And you know, I'm blessed that like people do really appreciate that. And they, the effort that I put into videos, like people do see and they appreciate it and, and they, they fuck with it. Um, you know, I do get hate. People say I'm a snitch or like they say, that I'm racist or whatever, you know, I just find, what? I, I find stuff like that wild. Cause it's just people like, are you racist? And it's just like, bro, all I do is like, listen to black music every day, mm -hmm. celebrate black artists, like put money into the black economy. Like I, I love black culture, whether it's like when I was growing up doing comedy, like I used to look up to people like Dave Chappelle, Eddie Murphy, like Chris Tucker. I used to watch Def Comedy Jam when I was like, I was like under 10 years old watching Def Comedy Jam, just like, I love this shit. So it's like when people say like I'm racist or, and stuff, I just find it, it's just super dumb. But like people do, you know, people do hate and it is what it is. But it's a surface level reaction to just white people course. talking about race. Of course, yeah. of course. <laughs> One other question. There are many ignorant people out there. Have you gotten any backlash that is real life? Not just, yo, I don't like you. Are you getting backlash from these? Because you aren't putting out anything that isn't already out there that people have spoke themselves, wrote down, and got paid for. Like, this is in the yeah. lyrics, man. These are interviews that they went and took their time and showed up and did, yo, all right, ready to start? Yeah, so this is what I did once. It's not like you're DJ Vlad and you're like, yo, tell me about this time. I mean, I know he's not blatantly trying to do that, but if there's anybody that's ever yeah. gotten some shit out of somebody, like, yo, cut that. There's also cut a whole shit. genre that, like, on YouTube now of people, like, policing comedians and podcasters, yeah. too. And, like, but they are also talking shit, making fun of them in their own way at the same time, yeah. too. So, like, so you that whole lane is, like, a thing now, too, you know, where it's, like, not the same thing. It's slightly adjacent. Or you got, you ever watch Coffeezilla? We were yeah, just talking yeah. about him. Like, a detective. Mm. I'm anybody who's out here scamming, I'm gonna investigate the shit out of you and bring it to light in the best way possible. Yeah, I do get that kind of thing, but at the same time, like, I've never had I've never had that kind of hate really in real life. Like, I mean, I did a live show, it was my first live show with DJ Academics and Castillo oh, nice. in London like last week. And I, I was just overwhelmed by the amount of love and positivity I got in person. Like I met hella fans. It was just all love. I know it was like I was on the event, so it's gonna be love, but it's like, I'd not really got like I, fans come up to me and take pics of me every now and then. And like, I, you know, it's cool, but I've never really had anyone hate on me like that in person. No, um, I don't mean in person, like online, like, yo, if you show up over here, 
oh, it's going to be bad. If you come to San Francisco or if you're in Texas or I get because, that shit. Yeah, I do get yeah, that shit. It has to come. The, the, but you know what's funny is it's like, I mean, one of the worst ones I had, like before Von died, like I made a couple of videos about him when he was alive and like he tried to take my channel down and like they were doing fake copyright strikes and stuff on me. And like eventually they I basically got pressed by his team on the phone and I had to like take one of my videos I did about him down. But like at the same time, you know, I get stuff that people are like, yo, don't come to Chicago. But I get a lot of love from other people who are actually like people that really, people you would know in Chicago. And they're like, no, you're good over here. Like you should come. And I, I do want to go to Chicago. I don't really think it's that serious. I'm, I'm a YouTuber. I think it's like people like to jump in comments and act tough and act hard like they're going to do something. But like really like who's like who's really going to slide on a YouTuber that's reading court papers? Like, come on. Like I'm not really involved. I've not really had any impact or influence on the situations like I never hurt anyone or killed anyone. Like I'm just reading about famous cases. And that's the thing that bugs me as well. Sometimes people are like, yo, I get DMs and they're like, you, you shouldn't be talking about these rappers and gangsters in Chicago. And I'm like, bro, these are billboard charting artists, bro. Like Lil Durk, he'll go top five on billboard when he drops a song talking about we're sliding and getting back for this person or that person. And it's like, bro, if, if you're putting a song out that's on the billboard charts, you like, you can't be surprised that there's, journalists it's and people the out there talking about, about it. Yeah. Literally, like, it's like, these are, this is what I think. It's like, if you made something that's so famous, it's on Wikipedia, you can't be mad that I'm talking about it. Because, yeah. oh. like, these these situations, they're getting written about in articles, mm. like Chicago Tribune, LA Times, talking yeah. about all these situations. I mean, even, like, I did the Draco the Ruler story, and it's like, there's so many articles about him and the situations he was in and his court case, and it's like, this stuff is so out there. All I'm doing is I'm good at putting it together and making more people get interested in it. But I think that means like the people that want to hate or the people that feel some type of way, it's like they got someone that's like an easy target. And then it's like, oh, and he's he's white and he looks like a nerd and he's a, he's goofy and we can press him and he's not going to do anything. And it's like, there's just not really many points to be gained from like pressing me and no. like saying that I'm a bad guy for like making documentaries. Like I'm not really involved. I'm just talking about stuff that's famous already. You have a lot of rappers as well. Like they'll post some stuff and then they'll be mad that people aren't giving it promo. So it's like, yo, like, I'm, you know, I just brought a million people. Like even um, when I, I did a live stream with 100K Track, who was King Von's manager, and he was saying, um, he was like, bro, he said, I'm not going to lie to you. Like after that Von documentary dropped, a lot of people were hating, but Von's streaming numbers went up. Like they made a bag off of me getting everyone talking about Von out of nowhere. And then like his posthumous album came out a couple months later. Now I'm not saying like, I'm responsible for their success, but like I probably added a few, you know, saying a few little few numbers to their streams and like didn't hurt. That that's making you money. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm literally helping you and that's free. And it's not you're like, I think he's a bad guy. I think he's a piece of shit. Also, this is who he killed. You're not I've watched your videos. You're not being biased. I mean, I mean, you're unbiased. I try to be. You know, I try and take a very objective view. Like sometimes I have said, like, you know. There, there was a situation one of the, one of my stories where you've got a guy that like shot up a car and it had like a woman and a child in it Damn. and i kind of be you know i kind of be saying like yo that's that's not cool like that's really bad behavior and shit like that um but like overall like i'm not really here to pass judgment on like often actually i'm very sympathetic and people hate on me for this too is i'll say like even in the von video a lot of people are like oh you made king von look like such a bad guy and it's like well bro he called himself a demon and like he's rapping about catching bodies but even then at the start of the documentary, I have a whole se sequence where I basically say, Lo, yo, look, like, Von is a guy, he grew up in one of the most dangerous environments in America, you know, in the south side of Chicago, in public housing. Like, he was growing up in a difficult environment. He saw his father get murdered. Like, this guy became a demon, but he went through so much shit. you got to have some sympathy. And then, uh, you know, I talk about the guys that killed FBG Duck, and I kind of say, like, look, it's bad what they did, but you got to remember that, like, these guys were born into this situation yeah. where you're growing up, you're losing your friends, your friends are getting killed, you're involved in this gang war at age 12, 13, you don't even really know what's going on. So like, I still have sympathy because I feel like everybody involved, whether you lose your life or you do life in jail, like you didn't really choose to be put in that situation. And yeah, you know, totally. I, I know that I have privilege and, and like, mm -hmm. I'm not from the hood. Like I grew up in a poor, boring seaside town and like, I've not had to go through what like someone like Vaughn went through. So I do have sympathy. I try and put that in the videos, but not everyone picks up on that. Because you can't understand unless you've seen that happen to a kid before. Yeah. Uh, witness the kid's brain wiring change to the point that they are completely a different human than they would have been had they not gone through all that shit. You know, it's it, uh, that's the thing. I think some people, they like to be like, oh, you know, these gangsters, they're just out of control and like you need to just lock them up. We need to be hard on them. And like, you know, I see where that's coming from. But then also on the other hand, it's like, 
I personally think like the real reason for a lot of like gang violence and stuff like that is like economics. Like we're talking about areas that like there's no funding, there's no investment in like areas. Like you talk about O Block, like all these gangsters and gangs that have emerged out of O Block. But then it's like, yo, the city of Chicago has never looked after the people in O Block. Like you got to ask yourself like what what are the situations and circumstances that exist that have allowed people to become these hardened gangsters and yeah. killers and feel like they have to sell drugs to survive because yeah. there's no opportunities in these areas and it's like i really do mm -hmm. try and put myself in the shoes of like the the say the rapper i'm talking about or if i'm talking about you know a gang situation like the guys that have got themselves caught up in gangs because it's like i never lived that so i need to try and like at least mentally like put myself in those shoes and understand because it's very easy to pass judgment when you yeah, don't know course. what that's like and like i yeah. ain't been there so mm -hmm. I'm, I'm at least trying to to just like mentally put myself in yeah. that position one thing that i feel like could help really the american inner city as a whole is if we just stopped hitting kids as parents overall yeah. stops hitting kids yeah holy shit no, i mean when you this is a hot take when you grow up and you're over there and you see how bad kids get hit normally by their parents that will change a kid forever you can't trust your parents not to hurt you. The average person goes on their whole childhood. When they go off into the world at 13, they have no problem hurting anybody. Because they've then learned. I, beat by your parents I your whole get, life. I get that, but getting slapped in my fucking mouth by my mom taught me not to be fucking rude in person. There's levels to it. There's levels. Yeah, I'm not getting my ass Making your kid stomped out. No. Go sit in the dryer because he's bad. No, that's crazy. Be blasting yeah, your kid dryer, in the that's chest. That's crazy. That's insane. Like, really? Like, that type of shit is I thought you meant on. like. Shut no, up, fool. No, there's... <laughs> I was like, what do you mean hit your kid? No, I mean... Shut up, kid. When I was over there all the time, man, that was just normal. Like The, the problem with that is yeah. it, it teaches a kid... I don't have kids yet, but, like, it teaches a kid that, like, violence is the answer. Exactly. And then, you know, you can't be surprised if that kid grows up and then uses violence on someone else. Bro, that's what... And, like, there's, there's other... I guess... I don't have a kid, but it's like, I'm sure there's other ways to discipline a kid... You know, violence, like, that's, if anything, like, last resort yeah. or just not at all. But I think that's a super good point because it's, like, again, it's one of the sad situations I see a lot with, like, these young guys that mm. are gangster rappers that get fallen with gangs. And, you know, unfortunately, in a lot of them, it's, like, their father's been killed or aren't around. And then it's, like, they're not really learning how to operate, how mm. to react, whether it's getting hit and learning that violence is the answer or just, like, seeing, you know, lots of people around you lose their lives and death just become, like meaningless to you you know to me it's like i've had people pass away in my life but it's like you know I, i've not been in the situation where like five of my friends from school have been shot and killed and like that must change you and change the way you think yeah. must change the way you think about life like if you got to take a life and all your friends have been killed or a bunch of your friends have been killed like taking a life probably ain't that much of a stretch to you mm -hmm. whereas me that would be a big stretch like the idea of if, even in self-defense killing somebody is like mm -hmm. it's, it's 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 Horrible. completely foreign out of my conception yeah. whereas like you seen if you've seen people die on your block like that's normal like it probably ain't that much of a stretch for you to pull the trigger on someone or end up like them like i'll shoot you first mm. i've seen fools die and i gonna be me mm. that's mainly the mindset i think is yeah. what comes mm -hmm. that's i mean just from people i know like that's that's what it is mm -hmm. and i get it i i'm not had to been there and shoot back at fools Man, like those, that like that's crazy how, when you have kids you realize just how crucial that like those couple of years are when you're a kid, like how vulnerable you are, how sensitive you are, how impressionable you are. You're getting wired like a computer. What direction is it going to go in? Like, and if you never experienced that, you don't get it. Like, it seems so insane, but it's like the program differently. Yeah. Yeah. Fully, man. Uh, and, you know, I mean, I've never been a huge believer in like rap music making people more violent. But at the same time, I do think like kids that are listening to drill music have got to understand that like, a lot of these themes and, and things like they need to understand that like if somebody's jumping on the mic talking about all these people they shot that's not cool that's not something to glamorize like that person is talking about those things because they've been through a hard time and they got to defend no, themselves because when drill rap in chicago came out that shit it became buffalo's new saying. shit mm. the dreadlocks the fucking mm. switches all that became the common in buffalo too like people will just think that shit's cool and it really will affect the way the whole shit goes like that's yeah, real. I mean, it's influenced the UK a lot because it's like Chicago Drill, you know, really blew up like 2012 when like Chief Keefe really had his yeah, heyday. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then a lot of people have come since. But it's like that was like that golden age, like 2012. And it's like over the course of the few years after that, in like 2015, 16, like UK Drill became a thing. Like we used to have like gangster rap. They used to call it like road rap. But it was it was very small. It, you know, it wouldn't do numbers. People didn't really have careers off the back of road rap. But like 
Chicago influenced the UK so much that UK drill emerged. And now UK drill kind of has found its own sound. And then that's influenced like Brooklyn drill. And so like all the beats and shit that you hear in the Bronx or like when like Pop Smoke was popping in like 2019, mm-hmm. he was rapping on UK beats, which really? was like basically a re- remixing of like Chicago drill beats with kind of like UK dance music vibes. That's what it sounded like. We, we The first time I heard it was some fucking club music. Yeah. It's talking about shooting you in the chest, but this is club <laughs> music. I swear the tempo, it was like... Where are the girls at, I guess? If that's the thing, it's like... It's like U- some dance music almost. So it's like the UK producers, they kind of took like the dark... Per- not percussion, like the dark vibes and, and instruments that you would hear on like a, uh, on a Chicago drill beat. But then they start to mix it with like a lot faster, like 140 BPM drums that you more hear on like UK, like dance music, like mm-hmm. garage music or, or dubstep kind of things. And like then rapping about gang life over that. And it became its whole new thing. And there's kind of a whole story with like Pop Smoke. He basically just found a bunch of UK drill beats on YouTube. He didn't even know they were UK beats. So he started working with this big like UK drill producer. And like he produced, I think it's 808 Mellow, produced like a lot of Pop Smoke's big hits like Dior and stuff like that. And it's like got that UK sound. And then Pop Smoke kind of popularized that UK sound. Like two, I don't know if you know 22Gs, but he was doing kind of like those beats probably before Pop Smoke, but like Pop Smoke really brought it mainstream. Mm -hmm. And then now the crazy thing that is now, it's like, Bronx and Brooklyn drill type beats have become so big it's like mainstream like Ice Spice like Munch and all the beats that she's rapping over like those are UK drill type sounding beats mm-hmm. and it's so like even though you guys don't really mess with any of our rappers take like, all the beats our beats oh, you guys are all over our beats bro yeah, I hear it like everywhere that. yeah yeah so it's a UK like that percussion style of like you know when you hear Pop Smoke Dior and it's like like the way that the kind of like the claps are kind of staggered and like the 808s really like hit uh, it's you should just do a video UK. on this. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. I've kind of mentioned it in a few other things, but it's like, you, it's, sometimes it's difficult to do a video that's not about a person, yeah. if that yeah. makes sense. If you yeah. sort of be like, oh, the history of UK drill from Chicago to UK, mm-hmm. it like don't really hit as a title. So you've almost got yeah. to like pick an artist. Like I could do, uh, I did do a, like a mini Pop Smoke video, but I think once the trial of the guys that kill Pop Smoke happens, like I might do the full Pop Smoke mm-hmm. like life story. And that'd be a good way to kind of talk about yeah. how he popularize those beats but man, kind of he was, going he was back fine. with all this wild shit going on with will smith yeah, yeah could there be a will smith video coming up breaking all this down you know what man i i really want to start doing maybe a couple videos that are a little bit outside of hip-hop mm-hmm. not that i'd want to like get out of the hip-hop space or anything like that but it's just like i do have other interests yeah. like slightly beyond hip-hop where it's like films like I, I really want to do a video breaking down the history of this youtuber boxing thing because mm-hmm. it's kind of like over the past five or six years the whole youtuber boxing thing it's become so big but there's been like so many people that have been involved in like building this scene. And I'd love to do like my style of video where it's like I get all the info, all the stories all in one video. I'd love to do that on like a few other topics like the YouTuber boxing. I mean, the Will Smith thing's interesting, obviously like, there's just so much to it. Like yeah. having listened to his, his, I listened to the audio book of his autobiography. Like I'd recommend anybody watching this, bro, go and listen to Will Smith's autobiography because oh, nice. he reads it and he performs, he even like raps. He puts in like little raps in the autobiography crazy what? it's actually fire it's like 14 hours of will smith oh my God. it's crazy bro <laughs> bro it's like it was some of the best it's like the best 10 pounds i ever spent bro will smith's autobiography is lit it's crazy Damn. but yeah i'd recommend it what but, an advertisement um, i love that yeah. i, I kind of want to li- i don't gotta read it i'll listen to will smith talk i already watched fresh prince mm-hmm. bro in the car like i know what traffic's like over here bro if you need like if you're doing like a two three hour drive bro throw that on like it's it's fire and i never knew so much of the history of Will Smith where he's talking about like, obviously he was a rapper. He won a Grammy as the Fresh Prince. And then he got the TV show, The Fresh Prince. Like in the book, he's talking about like, he was a, a house party at Quincy Jones's house. And Quincy's like, let's do an audition right now for this new show I got. That's The Fresh Prince. And Will Smith's like, what, you want me to audition now? Like we're at house party. Mm-hmm. And like uh, Quincy Jones is just like, bro, this is your moment, do it. And like, he did an audition on the spot, got the show, became The Fresh Prince. Like the guy... Will Smith's life story is like crazy, bro. He's like the real Forrest Gump or something, bro. He's like been in, in every era just killing it, bro. It's crazy. The first thing I thought was like, he can't run good? I don't know why that's the first thing I thought of was the braces on the legs. So hold on. Will Smith, like, yo, his dad beat me. So he's like, yo, I'm a good actor. My dad beat me. So what you're saying is when I have kids, like every Sunday, just like, you're going to college. Mm. Right? It's a little that's like face advice. smush. But yeah. I love you, but you're going to be something. Yeah. Well, you know what was interesting from the book? Because Will's talking about how he was kind of really hard on his kids. And he he basically, like, he was basically saying, he was like, a normal dad, if your kid says they want to become a singer, you maybe get them some singing lessons and encourage them. And he was like, but me being Will Smith, 
I got Willow, Willow in the studio and got, did whip her hair back and forth yeah. and made her a number one Instantly. selling artist at like 11 or however young yeah. she was. And he was talking about how like he kind of had to realize, he had to check himself because he realized like his daughter basically was like, Willow was like, I'm kind of done with the singing thing now. Like, I'm bored of this. And he was, he was like, no, we got to do world tour. We got to do this and that. And he was like, I had to check myself and realize like I was becoming this pushy father, but like, even if my daughter she did a hit song and she don't want to do that shit anymore, he was like, I need to just listen to her feelings and like not be so pushy. And like how Will's father was kind of, he wasn't pushing him to be an actor, but he was just like very hard on him uh, and all this kind of stuff. And I don't know, man, it was just such an inspiring book, but like hearing about I think about of that, a quote from Will Smith's dad all the time. If you want to build a brick wall, you don't build it in one day, you put a brick up every day. Especially um, every time you've been quoting <laughs> that quote. Yeah, that's right. It's from it Will Smith's it's dad. From the book. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, For yeah, three <laughs> years. <laughs> I've heard this quote from Marty. I've used it once because it worked really well. Never did I know it was Will Smith's father. Mm. You are a fool. <laughs> Holy shit. Bro, there's like a whole chapter in the book about that wall, man. Him building that wall with his dad and shit. Like, it's, it had a huge impact on him. It's a great metaphor, man. It's like, it's actually... I remember I just started the book and I was just like, what the fuck, he keeps talking about this wall, bro. He keeps talking and talking about this wall mm -hmm. that he was building. But like, it's like a perfect metaphor for his career. And bro, it's crazy, man. Like that book is nuts. I could I could sit here for hours talking about that book, that, bro. It's so it? funny because I built a fence with my dad, but he was on meth. <laughs> so <laughs> like, it wasn't, it wasn't the same for me. <laughs> but then again, it did make me work hard. Like I don't ever want to build a fucking sure. barbed wire fence again in my life. Bro, if Will Smith's dad had meth, we wouldn't have none of this. No handcuff, or no iRobot. what if we just had a more hyped up version bro, of all of these things? If Will Smith was on meth, now that would be a movie I'm trying to see. The Chris Pursuit Rock wouldn't have dipped that The Pursuit slap. of Meth. <laughs> the Pursuit of Meth. Yo, when you come, you should come hang out more. I'm because down, these are the things that I love to hear. The Pursuit of Meth. By Will Smith. <laughs> By Will With Smith. his son and shit. But that, that's another <laughs> crazy thing. Or his son thing. being sold. Because yeah. he needs drug money. Bro, they're sleeping in that bathroom. You know uh, what I'm saying? It's meth not too all night far long. off. And then he's like, yeah. give me that $5. Get you back tomorrow. I'm like, I don't have $5, <laughs> yeah. sir. Well, you, do you want a sexual favor for some meth? <laughs> That's pretty much the end of the movie. Yo, Will Smith's getting hard right now on the internet, man. He's going through it right now. There's right. a lot of stuff coming out about him. That's a good pun. <laughs> Bro, Jada, 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 man. Jada, Jada she did him dirty, man. She did I'm him dirty. I'm not a big fan of that lady. <laughs> she seems very, uh, as second you leave the room, she turns back in. You ever seen the movie uh, Witches? You probably have. I haven't actually seen it, no. For the old one, Horror the movie. UK one? No, the, U the old English Nah. Movie about oh, ah, yeah. that sounds like some UK shit for sure. That sounds like Jada Pinkett Smith, like she turns into a witch and her wig comes off. <laughs> yeah, you seen the movie? You know what I'm talking about. Um, sorry, we're way, way, way off. You do so much. You do. You're a virtual journalist out here. You're you're a journalist. You're doing all of these things about American rap, UK rap. You touch on too. From a person from there, what are your three three favorite artists? Because mm. you know none of the people besides the eight homies from UK that were on the chat know who we're talking about. So you enlighten mm. us. What, what you're an expert? Not you said Stormzy, right? He's like, is, what's his, his what's his equivalent? American the thing with Stormzy. Uh, Stormzy is a bad example. Stormzy is a grime rapper. So here's the thing you got to understand: like, there's grime and then there's UK drill, and they're actually very different. Like, grime in many ways like inspired UK drill, but grime was like the precursor. So Stormzy is a grime artist. He's not a drill artist. So what, what does that mean, grime? Like the way that the beats, like the kind of beats they rap over, are very different. It's, gotcha. Do you know the rapper Skepta? You heard of him? Yes. So like, he was like one of the real pioneers and like big names in grime. It's hard to describe, but like the grime beats are a little bit more. Like they're kind of kind of more more closer to like dance music or like kind of like I did not expect that not not like dance music but like more like what UK would be like kind of garage dubstep kind of like got you it's hard to describe but like grime beats like the kind of sounds you would hear in grime beats it's like um I don't know, I can't try, I'm trying to think like do the no it's hard to impression. explain because if you you can't explain that and you're an expert it's like well how do I explain the feeling if I played you I don't want to we can't get copyrighted but like if I played you the two different beats like grime beats. It's much more like, so the beats are very different. They've just got a different sound. You would know if you heard the difference in sound, but then the subject matter, like Grimes a bit more about like emceeing and like having battles and clashes and stuff like that. Okay. And then UK Drill, the beats are different. They're much more darker and like the percussion's much more kind of harder. But then the, the subject matter is all about gangs, violence, like, like Chicago Drill. So it's kind of like- So Drill music is gangster music. It's basically like UK gangster rap. Yeah. <laughs> that, that kind okay. of thing. So it's like, 
grime was much more about like MCing and rappers and like having bars and it was more about the rapping. Whereas drill, it's more about the drilling and the violence and talking about real shit that happened. Storytelling. Yeah, exactly. So like Stormzy's more of a grime artist. Like Stormzy's, you know, he's like one of the greats in the UK. So what, what's his comparison? Like if you're like, yo, he's the something of UK. He's the, he's the this of UK. Like I'm talking about in, in terms of popularity. Yeah, yeah. I would say he's like, not quite Kendrick. He's like so. Um, he's top ten. He's yeah, 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 top five. I'd say top five. But like shit. top five ranks. He's like he's like nearly. A, I'm trying to think who's like an artist that's like seen as a good actual rapper with bars with integrity. Not quite at Kendrick's level. Oh, who's that guy? Um, man, I can't remember the guy's name. Nah, I can't. I can't remember. But like. I see what you're saying, but if you're saying he's top five, the motherfucker can't walk down the street without getting oh, yeah, yeah. stormed. Yeah, yeah, A-list. That's he's a, he's, he's A-list. A-list. That's what I'm trying to think. Like, So he's your, you know, people say he's the Michael Jackson of China. Yeah. That's what I'm trying to get in the terms of, because exactly. we don't know any of this. And yeah. if we do, I just named two artists that I've heard from UK and that's because I've, they really come up on the Spotify and that's it. Yeah. No, I don't think Americans are going, ah, UK drill. Not a lot. Yeah, yeah. It's a very, very, it's like, when anime was small in America, and like you nerd, you like, what do you want? Dragon Ball Z. When I was a kid, everybody made fun of that shit. I like Dragon Ball Z. I thought it was cool. Mm-hmm. And then now it's like, anime is popular. Mm. So maybe give it five years. You know, because I mean? Central Sea Kid is collaborating with some of the biggest artists in the world. So Sench, Sench is like up there. I would say, you know, as far as like the artists that have the momentum and the motion right now in the UK, he's probably number one, realistically. And he he's one of the first people that Americans are really excited about. Like I, I think was he's in, dope. yeah, I was in Miami in January, and like I people were coming up to me being like, "Yo, like Central C, like we fuck with him out here." And so he's really gone global. He's collaborated with a lot of international artists and gone big. So he's definitely up there, man. Central's one of them. Like as far as other people who are really big that you would mention from the UK, like. Digger D is a big one who's like really done like had mainstream like chart success um, with drill music and like he's kind of got you know history in the streets and he he was part of this this sort of gang crew called Ten Eleven and they basically got banned from making music by the police so like he caught this crazy case and they had this wild like shootout in public broad daylight and shit loads of members got sent to jail and they got banned from making music so Digger was banned from music for a little bit he eventually got out of jail and he's super young as well. Um, and then he got out of jail, started making music again. There was like a BBC documentary about him, Damn. about how he was kind of like banned from making music and the police were just trying so hard to put him back in jail. And eventually he kind of got his music career back on track and I think he's got a big deal. But, um, you know, he's another person that's kind of doing it big from the UK. And there's a lot of names, man. It's, it's hard to like single anyone out or to do like a top three, but there's definitely a lot like other people to check out. Like Heady One is kind of like one of the greats when it comes to UK drill kind of from like the street side and like stories and stuff. He was kind of, he very famously had this situation where he kind of like got caught lacking. Um, and like, he was basically filmed, like getting beaten up and like chased out of this university after his show. And then there was this whole thing where it was like the next day there was like some crazy shooting and people were like, oh, it's like the get back for like what happened to him. And then he dropped this song kind of about that situation called No Better that was just super viral. And it's one of the hardest UK drill songs. He kind of popularized like, doing like shh as ad libs it's like he had this song that was famous he was like next day shh got got by shh Uh, and and like like he was like the first guy to do that basically (laughs) and so like he he's gone on to become like one of the greats and he's had like i can't remember i think he had a number one album in the uk and like he's collabed with a lot of big american artists he did a track he's one of the guys that did a song with drake so he did the only you freestyle with drake and that was like a huge moment for the uk like getting the drake co-sign so yeah heady's a really good one like obviously like he has a big beef with this other rapper called Tion Wayne, who's like another one of the greats when it comes to UK drill. He's kind of a bit more like on a party kind of wave. Like he's, his music, like he had a number one song in the UK with another rapper who's dope from UK called Russ Millions. So like Tion on Russ Millions, I think it was the first UK drill number one song in the UK. So that was like a crazy moment, this track called Body. So it's Tion Wayne and Russ Millions and that was nuts. But like, in the UK, it's now got to a point, it's only over the last few years when a few of these really big artists have come through that like, we kind of, on the radio in the UK, you, we're more trying to hear our own UK drill artists than American artists now. Like Americans still do well, but like most of my life, American rappers have always been like on the UK charts, like 50 would drop a song and it would go number one in the UK or whatever. But like now, the UK artists are getting way more respect when it comes to rap. So it's like- mm-hmm. We're growing up, all the kids that in school were listening to American rappers. 
I mean, like I said, I grew up in this small town, so like no one really listened to rap. Like, I was the odd one out. Oh, no shit. No one was into it but me. What so do people listen weird. to? Pink Floyd. Like the rock. Beatles? People over like the rock and, and over shit. and over and over again. Or like indie, like when I was a kid, when I was like a teenager and I was listening to rap, like all the people my age will listen to like indie. So like shit like, uh, I don't know, like Oasis. Mm. Or like, yeah, I know. I know but that I mean. shit was 15 years before. Yeah, that, that's what we were into. Or like, uh, I don't know, like The Killers. Like oh yeah, that. but we got that shit. Oh, yeah. we're almost the same age like when you shit. were in high school. Yeah. So you were on the same shit. Oh. But I, I didn't listen. I literally, we're over here too. bro, I do not listen to anything other than rap music, bro. People are like, oh, do you listen to this this genre? And I'm like, bro, I do not listen to other music that isn't rap music. <laughs> I just can't like, I think it's cause it's like, I had older brothers. So all I ever heard was rap music. Like when I hear songs that aren't rap and it's not like 16 bars of rapping and a chorus, like yeah. I'm like, bro, what is this? Like, I don't like how this song is structured. Like mm -hmm. for me, it's just always been rap music. So it's like, I don't, like, do you have some of the best rock music in the world's history? I wouldn't know, bro. I ain't, I ain't heard none of it. Wow. I don't hear any of that shit, bro. Just rap music. That's all I got. And it's like, <laughs> it's difficult because people are, oh, you must have heard this. And I'm like, nah. Like, the, the best I can give you is I've heard, like, all the Beatles. And I think I get, like, the songwriting is quite good. Or, like, Ed Sheeran, but that's it. Like, wow. It's all rap for sure. I always said, damn, UK's got such better music than this. Fuck, man. Yeah, you're. That's crazy. We're fucking flip flopped as a kid. I'm like, damn, mm. all these UK guys are so cool. Why do they have to be not American? <laughs> and you're over here listening to nothing but rap. I'm like, damn, we we were flipped. I feel like the UK had a really. I I'm not that into it, but it's like the UK had such a good run on like rock music and shit, like the throughout the years, years. Or like the Beatles and stuff, like even some like Ed Sheeran, yeah, Adele, even like Pink all that kind Floyd. of shit. Pink Floyd, yeah, yeah, man. <laughs> hella hella people, but like. That's the funny thing is like me growing up, all I was trying to hear was like Eminem, Jay Z, Fifty Cent, Nas. Like you're Marty. You know what I'm saying, yeah. You just cross the water a little bit. Uh -huh. He's out <laughs> yeah, exactly, there in New York. Bro. It's like that's for me. Like uh, people always say this to me, like, why were you so into rap music? And like, I feel like for me, it was all about like success and like just hearing these guys that had come from nothing or like come from people like Jay Z, come from the Marcy Projects and was dealing drugs to becoming multi millionaire. And like, I was a kid watching all the music videos and they're on like yachts and driving Bentleys. And I just thought these were the coolest people I'd ever fucking seen in my life. Did you see his interview he just did with Gail King or whatever? I haven't seen it yet, but I know the one you're talking well, about. He said the same thing. He's like, hip hop was the first time where it was like, you could become successful without going to Harvard or going to some mm. school, but you could actually be broke and have nothing and have this like bridge to success. Yeah. It made it possible. Uh, that for me, that's what allured me to it most, man. Cause I, I would see even like, even the the money for sure, but even just like 50 Cent, the idea that, yo, he got shot nine times and survived. Like this guy's invincible. Like this guy's the real Terminator and he come back and he sold 10 million albums and proved everyone wrong. Like I just remember being a kid hearing that story and like that music video of In The Club where like, you know, 50, you know the story, you know 50 got shot nine, mm -hmm. shot nine times and the start of that music video where he like comes yeah, down yeah. from the roof and he's like in the in the uh, the doctor's lab with Dr. Dre. Yeah. And I'm watching, I'm like, yo, this guy got shot nine times and like he is jacked, like he's yoked, like pause. But like, you know what I mean? Like he looks amazing. Get a vengeance, like, bitch, I'm alive. I'm with Dr. Dre. I was like, I wanna be 50. Like, I wanna mm. be like this guy. Like, I wanna embody what what this guy, this guy's energy. Yeah, and, he's even, a superhero. and even like Eminem, like, you know, I, I grew up and like, you know, there was times when I was like an angry kid and like, you know what I'm saying? Didn't get on with my parents or they, they didn't want me listening to rap music or like whatever. And I just like, you hear Eminem bro and it's just like all that anger kind of yeah. comes out of you and the way he's expressing it and the way he's so lyrical and he can actually like, like even you think a song like Stan, like he can paint a whole picture and tell a whole story in three verses and like have multiple characters. And like the song Stan is like a movie. Yeah, And I was just so inspired by rap music, man. Like I would listen to that. Then someone might play like the Beatles and I'd be like, this is shit, bro. This ain't yeah. nothing on Eminem. Like, yeah. Bro, like Eminem is like, like it, the songs were literally like movies. Like you could see it like a movie in your mind. I was just so inspired by this music. Mm -hmm. that like- It's a different energy. Yeah, man, for sure. There's a whole different energy you put into rap music than you would do in a com completely You know what different. I mean? Like days to confuse. It's, like, it's a whole rap different Rap music's all feel. about confidence. That's why yeah. like, if you don't have confidence for yourself, you listen to that, it can juice you up. Bro, the song Lose Yourself, man. Mm -hmm. Like that shit, you know, that deserve to win an Oscar. Like that yeah, song, sure. you throw on Lose Yourself. It's kind of a joke. Like you hear, I remember, I can't remember who said it, but someone said some joke. It's like, oh, the dude was in the toilet listening to Lose Yourself, like mm -hmm. hyping himself yeah, up. Yeah, but like, you listen sure. to the song, you lose yourself, bro. That song actually will make you believe you can do anything, man. And then you think about the actual story. Like if you've seen Eight Mile, like Eminem, coming from the trailer park in eight mile Detroit and just off the back of being a good rapper, just having bars, yeah. performing and freestyling and battling every night, he literally became the 
best-selling rap artist in history. Like Eminem is like Elvis for this generation. Yeah. And that's just off the back of talent mm -hmm. and determination. So like yeah. when you hear Lose Yourself, bro, that shit will actually change your state and like actually make you ready to do some shit, bro. Like I find like if I'm tired in the mornings and I can get the right song on, bro, that will literally change my state, bro. Mm -hmm. Like more than drinking a Red Bull or something, you know, because mm -hmm. like music's powerful. You're not wrong. Stay fly. <laughs> I play that a lot. When you're right <laughs> here. I remember the first time I saw the battle scenes in Eight yeah. Mile. I got fucking chills down my whole body. You're bro, right. You can't imagine being there, bro. Like, you just, like, because I've been to hip hop shows and I've been to sort of battle type things. But again, like, where I grew up, the, none of that stuff was really going on. Like, my older brother would sometimes, like, cause he was a, a sort of, pop, he was a rapper. He would, like, go to rap battles and stuff in London. But like we were living in this place, Bogner, and like he would go up to these rap battles and stuff, and I'd be a kid and always be like, man, it must be so cool, like watching Eight Mile, and just that energy, like of being in a in a venue and like spitting bars and actually rapping to a crowd that are like hyped and like rapping along. Like, you know, I used to I used to rap, like I never really got anywhere with it, but I, I played a couple shows and performed on stage here and there, and it's a buzz, man. Like what rappers do and the way that they actually can like get a crowd hyped with their words and their mm -hmm. ideas and their thoughts delivered in the right way. Like in poetry, bro, it's just, the genre is just incredible. Like I got so much love for it. What's up guys. As you know, Hamilton devices has been sponsoring the show for quite some time now. And if you haven't checked out their website, you're slipping. If you smoke weed, if you like carts, if you like dabs, if you like smoking out of fun stuff, go to hamiltondevices.com and check out one of their 900 items that they have. There's something for every single person. And remember it's holiday season. Maybe you don't like vapes. Maybe your best homie does. Maybe your best homie likes to dab. Maybe he likes to smoke three carts at once blasting in his face. If so, go to hamiltondevices.com. And if you do use code dope as usual for 15% off of the entire site. This right here is the KR1. This is a cartridge two-in-one cartridge bubbler. You can smoke a vape, of course. Why not smoke it with some water? This is the exact same thing as KR1 except double. You can have a bubbler for two vapes at the exact same time. This is the world's first double cartridge bubbler for all you monsters out there. And if you want to check this out, but you also want 15% off, go to hamiltondevices.com. Use our code dope as usual at checkout and that's 15% off. Once again, thank you for supporting the brands that support us. Manscaped, it's usually for your dick. Do you ever cover any Bay Area artists? I haven't yet, man. A lot of people have been requesting, but I haven't Start really done it Mac yet. Start with Mac Dre for us. I get, I get asked a lot. Thanks. I get asked a lot to do the Mac Dre story, man. Because the way you break shit down, I don't mm. have to watch eight different other fools mm. do peace stories. Because you... What you're saying, there's a reason why your shit's four hours long because you're yeah. talking about everything. Because there's times where I'll watch a piece and go, they didn't even talk about like four fucking years, the last four years of this fool's life. Mm -hmm. It just went to, all right, and then on November 1st, he got passed, passed away. Like, what about a successful last, last four years, fool? Mm -hmm. So there'd be people that cover it, but not enough that cover it well. So if you do, it'd be dope. I'm down. I will yeah. do it. Or you, look you, up the Jacka. But you know, the, the interesting thing about that is it's like, I try and cover a story. It's something I've been trying to do over the last couple of years. And I feel like it's what helped me get to the next level is like, when I cover a story now, I try and do it in a way so that you could still enjoy the whole video if you'd never heard of the artist at all. Like what I've been doing recently is like, not only explaining their whole life story of the artist, but also explaining the history of like the city they're from. So like if I did the Bay Area, mm -hmm. like literally yeah. going back into the history of the city, like I just did the young boy video and I do like 10, 15 minutes on like the history of Louisiana and like, what it's been like for the last like 100 years in Louisiana, like the birth of jazz music and like swamp pop and all the different types of music that like different people and immigrants from kind of all around the world would kind of like go there and make music in Louisiana and all the different types of music that sort of evolved over the years to all explain like why young boy now he's making this like very Southern Louisiana type rap that stands out. It's nothing like the music that like Dirk is making or like the Chief Keef is making or the, the New York rappers are making. It's like 
southern and it's got like it's like hundreds of years of like music evolution that have actually contributed to this situation and then going into like the gang politics of like well why is like why are poverty rates so high in louisiana that have led to these gang conflicts that young boy is then rapping about and it's like like i say if i did the bay area it's like trying to explain it in a way that someone from the uk that has never even heard of the bay area mm -hmm. could understand and learn everything about it and then learn like the mac dre story from yeah. scratch and that's why they end up being two three hours because it's like bro it might take Makes 15 sense. minutes to explain like what the bay area has got going mm -hmm. you know have you been able to use any AI tools to help make your job researching easier yet? No, man, this is so funny. People keep hitting me with people saying like, oh, you know, ChatGPT is going to be able to write one of your scripts. And I'm like, bro, no chance, bro. My, my shit's complicated. Like yeah. I'm, I'm every now and then like I hop on GPT and I'm like, let me see if I can come up with a way of it giving me some info. But like I always find I'll ask it shit and I'll see mistakes. Like I'll see stuff that's wrong. Like I've been on there before and been like, okay, like write me like the, the history of Chief Keefe's career or something. And they'll write it up and I'll be like, ah, they're missing all this important stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's like, and the way they've written it's not really like passionate. So for me, I, honestly, like I'm quite skeptical of like the whole AI thing, to be honest. I think it's clearly good for certain things. Like I found it useful for certain things. If I need to get a bunch of data that I've got and put it into a table or like rearrange it, it's great. Mm -hmm. It saves loads of time. But like creatively like the way that i write my videos i do it with a lot of passion and i think that's where people connect with it because they can tell i really like have a personal connection with the topic or the artist that i'm talking about and when you get stuff written by gpt it ain't really got that personality and it hasn't yeah. really got that connection and i think people can tell like there's a lot of these channels especially in hip-hop like there's a channel called hip-hop daily that's like i can tell that whoever runs it they got a voice they got like a i don't know if it's an ai generated voice or just like a voice artist from Fiverr. But you can tell they don't even care about what they're reading. They're mispronouncing rappers' names. Like the stories, they kind of just keep repeating the same info over and over again. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like, ah, oh, this is like an AI version of what I do. And it's like, they sometimes get views, they sometimes don't. But like, what I'm creating is special. And it's like, I have a personal connection to these stories. And like, I'm personally finding the information and I'm deciding like, what's relevant and what isn't. And like, what moments of the story are important. And like, what nuance to put on certain things. And like, these AI tools, like, they haven't got that human yeah, touch. So exactly. I haven't found any way that I can use them for the research yet. And as well, like a lot of the, like a lot of my methods that I used to find stuff are quite advanced, like doing Twitter advanced search or like, you know, doing, finding, a, finding out shit on Reddit and finding like small, like communities of people that are interested in certain scenes. Like I, I've not looked into it yet, but I'm sure there's like a, a Reddit Bay area hip hop drill sub, sub uh, community that like, I would want to go to if I was going to find like the real background story of like the Bay Area artists and like GPT ain't really going to be able to do that and it's not going to be able to like read comments like for me it's like like I'll do stuff like if I'm doing a video on like an old story and I watch say like an old Chicago music video I'll read all the comments and then sometimes the comments might have leads or like links to like other stuff and you know that's how you end up finding like a vlog from 15 years ago with like 200 views on it from like a famous artist because you're just finding all these little connections and like GPT at least right now ain't, ain't really able to think on that level and like go deep and like find stuff that other people aren't really going to think about it's it's very good at giving you the generic thing that like yeah. a basic person would give you if you yeah. got someone to like help you with a research or something mm -hmm. you know I think people think it's way more powerful than it actually is it's like yeah it's a small little tool it might kind of push me in a little direction I've got a theory that like I just think there's something weird with AI and the human brain. So it's like, for example, you know how there was these websites where you can get AI generated images, right? Mm -hmm. And it was like, oh, they're gonna be able to, you're gonna be able to fake anything. And they did the fake, like they did the AI fake of Trump getting arrested. Yes. And people were like, oh, it looks real. But it's like, now when you look at it, you're kind of like, ah, I can kind of tell that's fake and yeah. I can see details. Yeah. I feel like humans are very good at outsmarting the AI. And people are like, oh, the AI is gonna get so good. But I think, as soon as the AI gets good, I think people's brains adapt very quickly. Yeah. Once everyone knows that AI deep fakes are really widespread, I think most of society would just be like, all right, well, I know I can't believe a video unless it looks a certain way. Or like, if it's pixelated, I'll just, I just know, I can just tell by eye that it's not right. And I think a lot of AI images you look at and you can, you can just, you don't even know how, but as a human, you got that yeah. innate sense of just like, as computer generated, like that's some shit a computer totally. made. Mm -hmm. And I think, uh, you know, when you watch videos that have been AI written, you can kind of tell like the way the sentences are formed and they kind of say the same thing over and over again. And you're like, ah, this ain't what a normal, like, you know, you could never get an AI generated podcast, right? Like people do that thing. They go on GPT and they're like, oh, 
generate me like five lines of dialogue for a Joe Rogan and yeah, yeah, yeah. and ASAP Rocky interview or something. And then you read it back and you're like, they would never say that. Yeah. They would never go like that. Mm-hmm. It's the chat GPT is not a kind of sore of music. Mm. It could tell you like, this is the number one hit. This is the coolest one. But like the artist, don't, that's not the best song. You know that because you're a connoisseur of music, so it matters. It's kind of like when we do weed videos, like you, we know that that shit's going to be fire. Exactly. Like, oh, that's going to be this because you're certain doing this, and you're talking about it, you're talking about this, you're putting the effort. It's on your channel. Mm-hmm. There's a reason why. Like you said, I'm not going to do months of research on somebody. I'm like, eh. it makes perfect sense. That's why the videos have the appeal that they mm-hmm. do. I got. I just watched a randomly. My homie was telling me about a guy named Rollo, and then yeah, you just did <laughs> one on the guy. I had no idea. The thing is, Crazy I don't story. know who he is. I don't know where he's from. And now I do. Every single thing. I've never heard one song. It's but, been in jail. But Rob, I'm saying, like, the way he was doing it, it's oh, just like, yeah, it was yeah. the way you did it. Like, this guy did what? He, and then you showed his interview clip of him, like, this is all from drug money. You go, what is happening? And then you're like, I don't know if that's pretty, you know, that's his decision. So the way you're doing it, it's like, it's not unbiased, but you're also still a fan. So it's not like you're sitting there going, Hey, if anybody look into this, this mm. lyric right here is another is more. You're not out there putting people out and trying to get them arrested. It's like I said earlier, you're, you're a fan. You're reading what you've seen and anybody's allowed to read that. But when I saw the Rollo thing, I couldn't believe these were he he said all of those things. Those are real videos of him saying I bought this with all drug money. Like, mm-hmm. Bro, what are you doing? Well, yeah. Crazy. What do you think about like uh, the Keefe D going on to, for Tupac's murder? Yeah. Now? The same thing from his Vlad TV interviews. They basically like fucking arresting him, right? Like, It just goes to show you, bro, self-snitching is, is at every level. You know what I mean? Like that guy, you know, the funny thing is, I think once the media, once the arrest happened, like you were seeing like the BBC were like, oh my God, like this guy's finally, they finally found someone for Tupac's murder. But if you've actually been following the shit, you'll know like Vlad's like, Tupac's murder been solved. Like Vlad basically solved, Tup- not saying Vlad solved it, but like the on, we had on. on Vlad's channel, he had the answers basically yeah. before anyone. And like now the media's like, oh, this guy got arrested and oh, there's these interviews. But like, if you follow Vlad closely, you'll know all this stuff that's been talked about all this time. But it just goes to show you like, there's, there's no time date on that. I guess it's like, what you guys call it? The statute of limitations? Yeah. Like, you don't have that over there? I, I think- um, You should find out. I don't, I don't think you do for murder in the UK. I don't think so. Yeah, we don't have it for murder here yeah. either, right? Just certain stuff. Just certain stuff. I don't even understand like why that's a thing. But I guess you would like it's for certain crimes, right? So obviously for murder, they can get you any amount of time. But yeah, like, it's like, it's like drug crimes. dealing shit, scammer oh, really? shit. I I don't know. Don't I don't know. But I know <laughs> drug dealing shit for sure is uh, seven years. Seven statute years. Of limitations. That's a that's a decent amount of time. It's a, long, it's a, it's a whole other lifetime, for, man. Yeah. But yeah, the Rollo story is crazy. It's, it's good because he just got out. That's yeah. the funny thing is like um, he, he wasn't even away for that long, really. I can't remember exactly it's when he went in. Five or six years, right? Yeah, but like I feel like. He was dressed on Vlad, it seems, in that big ass blue mm. po- fucking, right? <laughs> In the big coat. Yeah, yeah. it's crazy. <laughs> That's a crazy story because again, it's that self snitching thing of like. He was just openly like in his songs. Like he was like, you know, talking about, yeah, we got this big trap house. We call it Pakistan. Like we're trapping in Pakistan and he's saying this in his songs and it's like, bro, it's only a matter of time before the feds got you. But in a way, I think what's interesting about that story is it's a, it's a story of like somebody that was really just daring. Like he didn't give a shit and he was just like, I'm just going to do this and talk about it and just whatever happens is, is what's going to happen. And like, you know, he he made a name for himself and yeah, he did his time in jail, but now he's out. He's going to do a bunch of interviews. I wouldn't be surprised if they made like a proper feature film, like some Walter Wall Street shit about him because mm. his life was crazy. Mm-hmm. He's still around to tell the story. Like he's got to be doing like a Netflix or something, you know, like obviously I love the documentary I made on mm-hmm. him, but like <laughs> I could see him doing a Netflix series about what he did and cashing in legally yeah. off of what he did. So in a way it's probably worth it. And I, as far as I know, I don't think, I don't remember seeing like murders or anything involved in his story. It was just big trafficking on jets mm-hmm. and counting a lot of money. But you know, it's a uh, it's a crazy like it's just like one of the craziest stories that hip hop's produced. You know, these sort of like drug dealer rappers. And since we have an expert here, and I don't know, I see so many people. You should uh, talk about this. Talk about that. You should have this guy on the show. You should have. I mean, obviously, some people pass away. You know I mean, things happen, or some people don't, or go to jail. People always talked about King Von. I had no idea who the guy is because I don't listen to. I listen to what I listen to. I'm not saying it's bad. I've heard some of it. Very, very, very catchy. Mm-hmm. Super evil lyrics yeah. about murder. 
What a storytelling ass motherfucker, though. Yeah. Wow, bro. You can listen to a song and go, oh, yeah, I saw every single thing you just said. That's why I like Mac Dre so much. I can picture it all. Mm. Bro, this man is a storytelling ass rapper. It's, it's great. A lot of evil ass lyrics, a lot of murder, a lot of disregard for life, which is mm. fine. I mean, NWA are talking about shooting fools, too, all right? So it's just a different genre. I mean, a different time. I know after he got killed, it was like the serial killer of rap. Mm. So. This is one of the few times where it's like this rapper, like, oh, that guy is dead. That guy is dead. Holy shit. That so everybody he was really talking about were already really killed. So is this man just why isn't he considered a serial killer? I consider him a serial killer personally. Right. Because like he meets the definition. I know a lot of people were upset with me saying that. And like I'm really I'm not trying to disrespect him or be like, I'm trying to put dirt on Von's name and call him a serial killer. It's no, just technically that like, it's like if you look at the FBI definition of like three or more murders in different locations more than a month apart with like uh, you know various different motives like bro he meets that definition if he says that he killed seven people in hella songs we're talking at least three songs he basically says he killed seven people like he says i got seven bodies bodies i got a few three plus was it three plus four um like he i think what i try to get across with that video is it's like we're in this era of hip-hop where it's like everything's about realness especially in drill it's like is he real he's doing no cap in like he's talking spitting facts on the mic and like everybody, when Von was alive, all anyone used to say is like, bro, Von is the realist. He really, he really bout it. And then you listen to the songs and he's like, well, he's saying he's got seven bodies. Bodies, I've got several. Like, you know, sh shoot all the women in here or whatever. And then like, it's like, well, let's look if he's, that, that was my, my goal with that video, which is like, l let me just look into, is he capping? Is it real? And it's just like, well, what are the murders people say he did? Okay, well, let me look it up, the rumors and then the lyrics. And that, that I think the area where the video really went to the next level was the tweets. So I basically read every tweet Vaughn ever made in his life, like from 2000 and I think 11, when he gets a Twitter account. I just read every single tweet. And then when a murder took place that he was rumored to be involved in, I'd be like, well, what did he tweet in the days leading up to the murder and the time of the murder and afterwards? I wasn't, I didn't know what I was going to find, but I looked into it and I'm just like, he basically pre-tweeted, he was sliding on people and then he would kill people and be tweeting afterwards like, ha ha, like who just got smoked or like who died, lol and shit. And it's just like, it doesn't seem like he was capping. Everyone said he was really about it. I'm not trying to disrespect him, but I'm, I'm not trying to glorify him either. Like he, meet, he met the definition of a serial killer. He was rapping, I got seven bodies. And if you look up the people who are allegedly the bodies, he's tweeting all around like, yeah, who died, who got smoked, we're smoking him. And like, he literally tweeted like, I done killed five GDs and shot 10 more. And it's just like, he was really about it. And if anything, it's like, I don't think it's even disrespectful to say he was a killer because he took great pride in being a killer. Like he called himself a demon. He said, I got bodies in here. Like I'm really about it. Like test me and all this kind of stuff. Like that's the... That's the content of his music. And it seems from his own tweets, his own statements, like he was really doing that shit. And like, you know, for better or for worse, I feel he's probably the like the quintessential example of like a street rapper that kept it real and really did what he said. And like, you know, I don't, I wouldn't condone killing in any situation, but Von really did rap what he said and said what he rapped and did what he, all that stuff. Like that's what it looked like. So that's why I think that story resonated with so many people. Cause it's like, I'm just I'm just laying out the facts. Like I'm not saying nothing crazy. Really, it's like Von that said all this crazy stuff, and I've put it all together for you to look at. And you know, it tells us it tells a one of a kind story. Like no other rapper has claimed to have killed seven people. Was and he a teenager when all this was going on? I think, uh, man, maybe he was. Like, he was real young. When I think he, died, he was right? like eighteen when like the first lot of killings were going on. I think. I think uh, maybe he was seventeen or eighteen when a lot of the shootings happened. So it was twenty twelve. He was. Uh, I think he was born in 94 and like all the first bodies and stuff was like 2012. So I think he would have been 18 when all the like killing and get the gang war started. And I think, oh, was he 26 when he passed? Something like that. Damn. Um, but yeah, man, like, you know, it's, but again, I try and also take a sympathetic tone. Like his father was shot by a sniper in Chicago by a rival gang. Like by a sniper? By a sniper. So like back in the day in like the eighties and shit, they used to have the gangs, the BDs and the GDs, Black Disciples and Gangster Disciples in Chicago were like rolling so deep. They used to, they basically used to run these different project buildings and they would have snipers on the roofs of the projects. And it got so bad, eventually Chicago, like they tore down all of these projects. And that's what kind of like displaced a lot of the gangs in Chicago because it was like, 
there were a few project buildings that a lot of these gangs really took over and then the city were like, okay, we're going to shut them down. And then a lot of the gang members all just had to move to all different areas. And that's what led to like a lot of violence in Chicago because you had all these former well-organized gang members just going like renegade all over the city. And like, again, these are the circumstances that Von came up in. I'm not saying like, he's a serial killer, he's a really bad guy, but, like, he meets the definition of a serial killer and he went through so much shit in his life that it made him a killer. I think the point that I try and make in the video, though, is it's, like, I say that he's a serial killer more so because even after he became famous, he was still trying to put hits on people and get people killed. Mm -hmm. And, like, he took great pleasure in rapping about having killed. Like, he wanted the world to know he was a killer. Like, if he was still alive now, he'd probably be on trial for murder and, like... Mm -hmm. He would be an infamous killer in jail living that lifestyle. And a lot of these famous killers in jail, you know, they become like prison celebrities, yeah. right? So he would have been probably living that lifestyle if he was still here, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, obviously, I don't want anyone to lose their life. Um, I think it would have been better if Von had survived and was still here. And, you know, we'd have been able to see, like, maybe, th maybe through the court system if he really, really, really did all of that stuff. But, like, obviously, it's, unfortunately, he's not here anymore. And, you know, the best you can do is research and police reports and his own lyrics tweets mm -hmm. and it, it paints a picture man it's you know it's it is and you know no pun intended but von is one of the craziest stories in hip-hop like ever i think people are going to be talking about von for the next 20 years like tupac mm -hmm. but in a different kind of way mm. you broke that down that's really, really well <laughs> <laughs> i was just stuck just listening that well, sorry, you broke that down very well. I got lost thinking For about it. For people that grew up on like that whole first generation hip hop you're talking about, who know nothing about King yeah. Von, would never really sit down and listen to his music. It's the perfect way to really wrap your mind around the shit. Like exactly. Because I learned all, everything I know about this shit is from your videos. You know what's funny? Because I'm so into hip hop and I listen to drill music all the time, I think anybody that's a big fan of hip hop and drill music, you're very desensitized to this stuff. It's not, it's nothing out of the ordinary to throw on a song and someone's talking about, I caught a body or I shot the ops, or I'm, <laughs> I'm smoking this person. Yeah. But it's like, people like my mom, or like someone that doesn't listen to hip hop, they throw on a King Von song for the first time, and he's talking about, I'm outside your crib waiting for you, I got five bodies. Like, to the average person, that's crazy. They never heard anything like that on a song ever in their lives. Yeah. And it's like, it's, it's interesting. It's like, I feel like that's why that story touched so many people and went so much bigger and wider than hip hop. It's because I think people that didn't know anything, a lot of people hit me up and were like, I'd never heard of Von before I seen this video. And now I've watched the video. I've heard a lot of his songs and it's crazy. And it's just like, them people that ain't never heard anything like that, that's never even heard a Chief Keef song, to them, Von is the first drill song they've ever heard. Mm -hmm. And he's talking about, I killed this person, we're smoking this person, that person, this person, that person. It's mind-blowing to them. And I feel like that's that's been interesting for me because like even making the documentary, I never really put myself in the shoes of somebody that never heard of, even a, someone that never barely heard any rap music to put on Von for the first time. And it's mm -hmm. just somebody that doesn't talk about murder every day in their life. Like that's... Yeah. That's crazy. It is like a full blown. It's like horror music in a way. Yes, it's talking about so much death that it's like it's like goth. I mean, yeah, I don't like West Craven genre. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't know that many other uh, like genres of like I don't know death metal or whatever that type yeah, of shit yeah, is. I don't exactly. know anything about that, but like it probably has that effect on some people because mm -hmm. it is hard. And then you know Von songs like you think of a Von song like on your ass, and he's like just so aggressive. Like he's almost shouting into the mic. Like, I'm on your motherfucking ass. I'm waiting for you in your motherfucking mm. grass. Like, just, it's so aggressive. Like, you feel like Von is, like, shouting at you on the mm. song. You know, it's it's intense for some people, man. I know. It's, it's like I make fun of my wife for watching nothing but murder mysteries and shows, and then mm. I'm fucking just listening to Griselda and shit, doing the dishes while she's watching <laughs> them. I'm fucking and shit. That's what my, my, my homie said that to me the other day. He was like, bro, drill music's just true crime for guys, basically. <laughs> it's exactly. true crime. <laughs> Exactly. But it's facts, bro. I mean, it's like... Yo, you know. that's a great slogan. <laughs> you get so many more people. It's true crime for guys. Yeah, that should be on your banner. <laughs> bro, it's, it's crazy. It's like a new realization. But the funny thing is, it's kind of sad in a way. It's like people kind of follow these gang members like celebrities or yeah. almost like gossip magazines. Because like there's a lot of different... Especially on Reddit, there's a lot of different subreddits. Like the UK Drill subreddit. People are like, yo, like this rapper or like this guy that's friends with this rapper just got stabbed and then they're like pictures at the crime scene and shit and oh. they're like oh this person just got stabbed and then there'll be like a new there'll be like insta story and be like oh backstory like this person caught this person and then they chase this person <laughs> and it's like i was chatting to my mate about it the other day and they were like man it's just like gossip 
for gang members it's and shit. Citizens app. Yeah, yeah, the Citizens app. Yeah, bro, it's crazy. And you know, like in a way, it's kind of sad. Like that's not you know that, but it's also like I feel like that's just what social media is nowadays, bro. Mm. Like people want to hear the latest person that got caught lacking or like celebrity that cheated on this person or like you know someone got exposed by a woman just it's just like an endless cycle of uh media Sh- horrible shenanigans for people. yeah but it but it also boosts people up like it boosts rappers up i mean people like you see the whole blue face Krishan rock thing and like yeah. that like them having their relationship drama was just like boosting up all of yeah. their media and like their subscription service and like music or whatever it's kind of like yeah, you can see a lot of instances of it's that. promo yeah yeah it's funny like i don't know it's kind of like some i feel like for some rappers it's almost like if you can get caught up in some of these situations it's almost like a booster for your career you know well it used to be fake beef yeah remember fake beef and now it's like we were talking about earlier it's real People now be, it's real diss songs they've been doing fake relationships too you know yes. what i mean people getting the little fake fake yeah fake girlfriends and shit to like get clout and like stuff travis it's so kelsey. weird huh like travis kelsey and taylor swift type of show oh is that mm-hmm. what they were doing there's no way on earth that travis <laughs> kelsey goes that's the woman i'm trying to be. <laughs> Oh, it's Taylor Swift. There's, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't know who um, that is. Travis Kelsey. Travis Kelsey's a guy. He's a he's a football player. He's dating Taylor Swift. I'm not saying she's unattractive in any way. Or, I'm shoes. not saying like, oh, he doesn't want to date her. I'm saying you're trying. I know little people like she's Taylor Swift. She can have any dude. Any girl can basically have any dude. Like you're a guy. <laughs> yeah. But him, it's like <laughs> you're Travis Kelsey, Super Bowl winning Travis Kelsey, giant tall man with money. This is America. You, you're, you're, you're good. Just walk in anywhere and go, Hey, yeah. do you want to go on a date? They're probably going to say, yeah, you're fucking on every commercial. I'm not saying girls are dumb and they'll just date Travis Kelsey, but most people would. That's the kind of what it is. Like, oh, he's rich, famous guy. Yeah. I'll probably date this guy. Taylor Swift's the most famous, apparently is the most famous person ever. Now mm-hmm. I found out recently she can date any dude too. Cause any dude's like, she's, she's a chick. Oh, she's a billionaire. You, you, do you know uh, what I'm saying? So yeah. when it comes to that fake relationship shit, I totally think the NFL was like, yo, Travis Kelsey, we need people You're to tear again. Yeah. You're now dating Taylor Swift, okay? Put it like a, a slice in your eyebrows so you're like, well, you, you still look tight, but date Taylor Swift. <laughs> like they try to keep him like, you don't want to date Taylor Swift, Travis Kelsey. I know that. The, the, the NFL's that's a that's a fake relationship. The NFL <laughs> needs it because nobody gives a shit anymore about the football. Really? Is it not a thing? No, people ain't rocking with it. No, people more. still watch football, but I think it's like uh, cigarettes now. It's like, mm. oh damn, kind of. You yeah. smoke cigs still? <laughs> Whew. Most people vape now. It's like, damn, you still watching football on Sunday? Holy what shit! What people watching instead? Like, what's the thing? Nothing. We're social media watching fucking the latest celebrity, no, the latest celebrity, <laughs> no, the the latest celebrity bullshit <laughs> shootouts and King Von. <laughs> I promise you, dude. I, I there's something about the lack of love for football and. Mm. I like football. I don't follow it regularly, but like I, I kind of like. I've always liked American football more than like soccer and shit. You know, like I never been that into sports because I was only into hip hop. Like that's all I was into. Like just hearing like the latest whatever Eminem was up to, or this rapper or that rapper, and watching YouTube and watching interviews. Like it's difficult. People always say to me like, "Oh, have you seen this new thing on Netflix?" And I'm like, "Nah." Like I'm just watching the new Lil Durk interview, or I'm just watching the new like Breakfast Club interview or whatever. And it's like. That's entertainment to me. So yeah, I do kind of feel that where the NFL are coming from. Mm-hmm. Like it's a lot easier to to kick it and watch three King Von videos on YouTube than like stay up and watch a football game. It yeah. just doesn't get the hype that it used to have. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But fake relationship? Yeah, I think that's a fake <laughs> one for sure. Uh, I wanted to ask just how's your relationship like with YouTube? When you make the reaction videos with people's music and all their other video clips, are you in a constant battle with YouTube trying to get monetized or are you just kind of good and it's working for you? I've had a lot of ups and downs with it. You know, I would say that on the whole, YouTube are like pretty fair. And sometimes it's a case of like, I'm a dev- I spend a lot of time like rereading the community guidelines and like anytime there's an update or a change to them, I'll like really read them carefully and try and think about like, is there any way that like, I'm maybe accidentally breaking some of these rules with my content. So like at the very start, I was putting like clips of music in the videos and like you're supposed to be allowed to do that under fair use if you're genuinely doing like a critique or an analysis of some lyrics, but the copyright system just doesn't allow you to do it. So at a certain point I just decided, okay, no more music in the videos. I'm not gonna use any songs. I'm just gonna use 
Like I've kind of really recently tried to shy away from even using like hip hop beats. I'm trying to use more like movie score soundtrack, like more to build a vibe rather than to just like pick a beat that sounds like the artist I'm mm -hmm. talking about. Cause I think that makes the videos a little bit more yeah. timeless, but like, so I don't use the music with the monetization. I've definitely had, a, I've had a few hits over the years of like, you know, having a clip of, of like two rappers having a fight in a video and getting demonetized and just sort of not really realizing that like, ah, oh, having physical violence on screen is against community guidelines. So I can't monetize if that's on. So it's like, as time's gone on, I've been a lot more careful. I did take a few hits last year where it's like, I got videos demonetized for like excess swearing. And I kind of thought about it. And I do have a lot of these IG lives where rappers might just be like, yeah, F this person, F that person, send the N word a lot. And it's kind of like, if it's like the F words happening in the video a lot, they will demonetize you. So like more recently, I've literally just been like, blurring out the f word the n word like when people are swearing if there's a fight on screen just blow it out you know cut out the audio or like just being very careful and so like now i do an uncut version of the video on patreon so it's mm. just like it's got all the swearing even maybe a few clips from some of the songs like because the patreon system is like a lot more fair um so i've kind of been like doing that uncut and then just having the youtube video like very heavily censored no swearing and that kind of thing gotcha. and you know i've been pretty lucky with it like youtube haven't given me too many problems with monetization recently like i, I had a few problems with the vom video it got taken down and put back up and i had to like like even now i'm blowing out all the guns like oh damn that it, bad it does take a long time that's that's one of the problems with it you know shout out my editors who like keyframe all that oh, yeah God. blur all the guns is kind of long <sighs> but at the same time it's like if that's what you got to do to get monetized then that's fair enough because like this is something I've really struggled with. It's like now I got over a million subs and like the videos generally get more than a million views when I drop. And it's like, you know, that's like having a million people watch, like that's having a, like a prime time TV slot or something like back in the day. So it's like, and you wouldn't see people saying the F word and smoking blunts, even at 9 p.m. on TV. Yeah. You wouldn't see someone smoking a blunt and toting a gun, really. So it's kind of like realizing <laughs> like I have that responsibility to be like, I probably should, I probably should blur out the guns, the blunts, the, the F words. Because it's like we are—it's like we're mainstream now, you know. It's like you know, try not to swear too much. All right, Marty, you hear this right here? You hear this? And, and the accent—he's right. Uh, I know. You're right. I have a channel. I'm at 1.6, right? Nice. And don't get paid. I've never really? gotten paid. Don't get paid for shit. I'm shadow ban, block, age restricted, every single thing. It's the weed. It's the weed. Yeah. But this channel is demonetized too. Our mm. podcast channel, because and you're like, well, you say the f word too many. I'm like, shit, you just said yeah. f word. You didn't even say fuck. Ah, I've been trying himself. to edit our clips Shit. on our clips channel. I try to There's go through and edit them. Yeah, it's, damn near it's like Joe Pesci it's clips. Takes ages, yeah, that's the problem, man. That's the problem. I, I was explaining this to my my friend Yuri, who I uh, got the t-shirt from last night. So, so who, Yuri is is who? Yuri, formerly of No Jumper, he's basically a live streamer. That's right. You're telling us. Yeah, the guy with the glasses. Yeah, yeah exactly. he has his own podcast now. They say me and him are the same guy. He's got his own podcast. Yeah, yeah and yeah. he does like regular live streams. But I was telling him he he gets demonetized a lot for for smoking weed and drinking on his streams. And I was kind of trying to explain to him like. I was like, dude, it's so annoying, but it's like, if you want if you want the channel to be monetized and you want your stream to be about more than you smoking weed, I was like, you, you need to just like get the weed off screen. Like, even if you're gonna smoke, like you could smoke off camera or something. And it's just like, <sighs> it's like, it's not what you wanna do, but it's also like, if you wanna, if you wanna get back into the monetization thing, like that's just what you're gonna have to do. Like no. the rules are the rules and it's annoying. But also like, I've got a friend, like a good friend of mine in the UK. He's like the biggest UK cannabis YouTuber called Drew is sharing. Oh, with the, you know, uh, the green hat. Blonde. He has blonde got, now, right? I think may, maybe he's had a few different colors. But Where's like, the hats? He's always wearing like the Yeah, yeah, yeah Drew is sharing. Yeah, 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 Drew, yeah, shout out Drew. But like, he's got the same problem. Like he got demonetized. So he's, but he's finding a lot of other ways to like make revenue of like doing sponsorships, yeah. like working with brands, like in a much he, bigger he, way. He was monetized as a wee content person? He was, but he was getting demonetized a lot and then he got fully demonetized. Like then they hit him. So like, normal. They get you eventually. Yeah, yeah, they always get you. But like, you know, he's like, he's doing his thing and he's, uh, I saw him the other day and he's just kind of like, he's like, you know, there's so many other avenues and like he is like, Weed is about everything he does. So there ain't gonna be a way that he can like keep the weed off camera and still do it. Yep. But he does he does really smart stuff. He'll do like YouTube shorts, like reviewing stuff and he might not show the weed, but he might talk about it. But like he did a, he did a hilarious, I, I see him, he did this funny YouTube short and he was like, oh, the best coffee shops in Amsterdam. And he was like, I really wanna try and get this video monetized. And he's like, yeah, this place, they got the best coffee. Like if you want some good Cali coffee, this is the best coffee I call shop. everything candy on my other channel. Oh, that's a good shout. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, I was eating candy out here. I just ate a bunch of candy. But it still got demonetized. <laughs> oh, man. <They're, laughs> the other channel. They're hot on it, man. But that's the thing, like, you know, the rules are the rules. It's just, you got to ask yourself, like, now that you're big and, like, you know, this is a mainstream podcast on YouTube, like, 
realistically, you're doing numbers that like a TV channel would want to do on a lot of these pods. So it's kind of like, you got to think like, could I do this and say this on TV? Oh, it's like, it. man, you know you're what right. realized about YouTube though? Because we had a third channel, completely mm. family friendly and clean. Oh yeah, my other and channel. And they demonetized really? that channel Except just for based content. on him hosting it. Ugh, and I don't cuss. Annoying, man. I don't that's cuss. Annoying. Smoke. It's all like cars, fun. Yeah. Reviewing this place in LA. Let's go on a hike. Please Let's don't do this. swear in the comments. Either. Yeah, please don't cuss in the comments in the live chat. I'm always in the live chat. Damn. Premiere. <laughs> And they still got me, but it's probably just because it's me. Because you're known, because you, you're known now, now known as like a cannabis yeah. content creator. It like, is what it is. You're just in the system. That's the annoying thing. Because they got the whole thing where they're like, "Oh, you're not. If you get banned for one reason, like you can't make other channels." Like I can't remember who it was, but there was someone that got banned, and then it was just like every time they tried to make a new channel, new angle, even as a guest on another channel, they would, don't let them back on. But like at the same time, like there's also something cool about being part of the like underground demonetized club of weed YouTubers that are like really cool. So okay, right, you know what I'm saying? That. You guys have got your own thing and you guys have got other ways of making money. So you know what I mean? It's like, it's it's a different, you're playing a different game. Whereas like, I'm trying to be like, I want to be like the, the A&E gangland documentary. It's exactly what you are. Shit. I even said, it's like a fucking network. Mm -hmm. mm. It feels like a network. The, it's the, the editing is seamless. Everything that goes back and then it goes back to you. One day, maybe you'll just be like in a news looking room. Mm. I want to you know I wanna I mean? upgrade my setup. Like I got the neon lights. Like, I feel like that's it's slowly nice. getting better. Yeah. Before it's, you got here, I was right. talking about that's how I wanted to do. Well, I talked to you about it. I think we yeah, did, I was yeah. talking about my, my live setup. Mm. I just, I, I have so many people watching and I'm using my laptop screen and I still can't figure out how to change it from, to 4K. So it looks like shit every live. I, I'm just, I'm that dude. And I would like to step it up. But for you, I feel like one day it will be that. I'd like, love to, man. Like, like you should, you should. That's where you're going. That's where it's heading even just watching, I'm like, damn. Yeah, they edited this. And you said, oh, I have a team editor. It's like, oh, thank God, dude. Because that means 24 hours you're, you're there. Yeah, that's the thing. Watching it back, a three-hour fucking video, watching the three-hour video back. That's constantly. one of the hardest things, man. Like, you know, shout out to my team. Like, we've all been trying to help and work out better ways of doing this. But it's like, when you get, when you're rocking with like a six-hour video and you're like looking for mistakes, like so many things come up, spelling mistakes. And then with the censoring, like, there's been so many times that I've watched a video back and I've been like, oh, damn, there's a blunt there that I missed. Oh. Like, because like, you know what it's like with rappers too? It's like IG Live, guys just got a blunt in his mouth the whole yeah. time and it's just like, you just miss it. Or even, you know what? Caught, I've been caught out a lot of times on this. I'll show like an IG Live and then someone's in the comments on the IG Live being like, yeah, F, F this person. Oh. And then you're, you're just like, damn, like another one. Like, I got a sense of that. It's just, it's a lot. And you know we have a we tough totally time with it, you mean. but you know I mean we're we're getting through it, and you know shout out my team man, they've been working mm -hmm. hard, so I really appreciate it. Yeah, so we've had videos like he's pulling the car out, and it's like oh there's a triple reflection of the fucking license plate oh, off of this yeah. window, off into two this windows window. back in, Bro. and it comes into <laughs> frame like wait. That is my license plate. That is the address to the oh, house. Like, oh my god! But you like it's like a forty minute video. It's nothing like yours. You're so freaking. But stuff. Shit. It's crazy how much stuff you don't realize that I've had it where it's like. I think I did, I recorded like the unboxing of my silver silver play button. And you just don't think you're like, yeah, yeah do the unboxing. And you're like, my address is on the package. Mm. See oh, my yeah. home address oh. right there. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. shit like that, or your license plate or your car, or like, you know, you just like, you do a little Snapchat in your car or something. And you're like, I just showed my GPS where I live. Like, oh, yep. like, oh like yep. there's a million <laughs> things, man. Like you can't think of everything, bro. It's so hard. It's mm. no, we, everything you just said, we deal yeah, with. Yeah. yeah. All the, in the cars, it's always reflections mm. and, it's always just the reflection of a fucking license plate. Somehow it comes back in. Being aware of what's outside the window or like- Where you're at, especially in LA. Coming in, coming in. Coming yeah, yeah but like, oh, we've shown this place twice. Now they're going to know what neighborhood we're in. Mm. You got to like, I'll be like, you know, I'll wait a couple more blocks and then we'll start filming. I always do that because, you know, it's LA. I know where you're at. Just me. I'm not even from here. Bro, you know, I had a crazy one. I don't live there anymore. But um, when I used to, I used to live in London, 2019 kind of times. So I wasn't as big as I was now, but I was getting there. Maybe I had 100, 200K subs. But I filmed like a little skit where I got on like the balcony outside my house. And literally I had someone hit me up the next day, be like, oh, I could see your balcony. I know which building that is. You live here. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, man, that's yeah, where that's I live. Crazy. Like, bro, I didn't even think of that. And it's like, literally like one second, I'm just like outside. Like, I think maybe I was smoking on the, I can't remember what it was, but I'm like on the balcony in my crib. And they worked it out. And I'm like, bro, it's so obvious it's me. I probably had like my bike in the background. Like if you're on the street, you could see I got a bike. Yep. And it, mm -hmm. I was just like, bro, I can't be showing anything. No lights, live. nothing on your balconies, nothing in your windows, nothing on your, uh, in front of your house either. Mm -hmm. That's why my house looks like <laughs> plain as hell. Cause yeah. inside I can fuck with it. People will know. I've had people tell me my exact building and floor before when I lived 
at the Da Vinci used to live. It's like now it's the, the trap central. Oh, Every really? drug dealer lives there. <laughs> but when I was there, I mean, I, there was drugs it's all the time in my house. Apartment complex. Yeah, but there was always drugs in my house. But anyway, I would see people just openly vac seal bags from Target, <laughs> just carrying them like in the elevator. Because if I was wanted to, I just follow you. Yeah, like you you got at least ten. At that spot, because if you need that many bags, I just came up on 10K at least. Mm. I'm going to rob you. And that's where it just, that's why LA is a, a server. Like you said, yeah. it's, it's Grand Theft Auto out here. But um, back to what we were saying, sorry. Newsroom, man, mm. maybe it will be mm -hmm. the, because I, I feel like content creators, we were talking about it recently, are, are taking over when it comes to people that are serious. Yeah. Because I, I like I like use him as an example. Bo Burnham. Do you know who that is? Yeah, yeah. He's great. Come on, man. He's just a Vine kid making those funny-ass clips. Mm -hmm. Now he's an actual, uh, respectable, upstanding stand-up comedian. Like, he mm -hmm. is an actual stand-up. And yeah. he's great. So there are people that can make it from just, I was just goofing off. Because there's exam clear examples of like, oh, you'll be around for 30 more years. Mm -hmm. You're fine. You're fine. So maybe it is the journalist saying, I haven't seen that yet. Like, where's that at? And mm -hmm. besides... Well, DJ Academics is more on the drama tips. He's 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 a whole different genre. Well, he's like the king of the hip hop news, like because he's the biggest he's hip hop news and gossip too. So yeah. it's different. Well, that's the funny thing is, you it's know? like nowadays, like obviously, I follow academics. I get a lot of my info from him. It's like usually he's just the first person with the info. Something news happened. It's on his page, but it's like crazy. Had to see how much broader. I remember there was that news like a few months ago. They were like, "Oh, they found some UFO in Mexico or some alien or some yeah. shit." Like I see, I swear I see that on Academics' page first, and I'm just like, "I'm getting my alien Why? news from Academics." Like that's crazy. You know what I mean? It's like it's like bro, it's, bro's branched into the alien side wow. of the news, but it really just goes to show you how mainstream, like even like Academics or Vlad or No Jumper, like you know, Vlad isn't just a hip hop platform anymore. He he was doing Sammy the Bull yes. interviews, yeah. like. I you don't read two LAPD policemen yeah. about the Tupac thing, and they said that who killed him ten years ago. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and, and he's talking like having interviews with like lawyers on different cases mm -hmm. and all kinds of people. And it's like all these platforms have kind of sort of gone beyond hip hop, or they've gotten bigger than just one thing. You know, I'd like to get to that point. Well, like I said earlier, like the Will Smith do documentary or like the YouTube boxing documentary. Like I'd like to expand beyond them, but then still do those videos with like my hip hop flavor and like yeah. you know cover things in the way it's like. If I did a video on YouTube boxing, I might not, it might not be a hip hop related video, but like, I'm gonna have a hip hop focus. Like all the rappers that have had celebrity boxing matches, like I'm a, I'm gonna fit that into the story because that's what I'm into. Mm -hmm. And that's what I feel like people are gonna enjoy hearing about. So it's like, even if I did a story that wasn't rap related, I feel like it would have my, because all I listen to rap music, all I'm interested in is like rap hip hop culture. Yeah. So the video is gonna be through that lens, which I think people are still gonna enjoy. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's just interesting seeing all these platforms that have gone so big. You know, I'm kind of getting there. Yeah. You know, it's good to feel a part of it. And if you think about it, hip hop, it used to be the underground. It is pop culture. It is mainstream. It is the number one form of music. So when you think about hip hop news and now he's covering aliens, mm. why wouldn't he? He's the big, he's basically the biggest news outlet for rap music. But rap music is the biggest thing in the world. So that's mm. why Blueface and all these fools are in the news so heavy and all this shit because they're the biggest people we have. Yeah, think if you think about it, like <laughs> who else is? People love gossip. People love to go, oh shit, and that's what that is. That's yeah. exactly what that most is. people reading the headlines have probably never even heard the person's music, but then they will after. Mm. And I think you said maybe start a little beef right here and get my little. It kind of is the the world of like, I need you just to hear me. Mm. I don't care if I have to do a sex tape at this point. That's how people are doing it. I got to be honest mm. because. Like I said, it's it's the mainstream. If you might, I mean, I think Cardi B is a very good example of like you were on that Bad Girls Club or whatever that damn show, Love and Hip Hop, mm -hmm. and now you're a Grammy Award winning top artist releasing every like. Now people see the formula of like, well, maybe I just gotta be a little wild for mm -hmm. a minute. Yeah. You know, look at Jersey Shore; all these fools are famous as shit now. Mm -hmm. They started off as a like everybody made fun of them, and now it's like, oh, reality TV is just reality now because mm -hmm. reality TV is in your phone. Well, the people, you know? the people who are popping the most now, I feel, is the live streamers, people that are doing the IRL yeah. live streaming. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's crazy because it's like, it's not, it's not drama. It's not like, not drama, it's not drama in the sense of like, it's not a scripted TV show. It's real life. Like they're giving people live in the moment, real life shit going on. Like there was that viral clip. What was it? Uh, HS knocking out John Zerka. Did you see that clip going around? 
I don't know who those names. You don't know them. Uh, the two live streamers basically had a fight, but it was live on stream. They were in Miami, literally fighting in the street. Recently, like a few days ago. The guy with a beard. Yeah, I think one of them. Big, had a bit. The big, big guy dude. with a beard. Yeah, yeah, yeah I yeah. see they that. They were rolling on the street fighting. I didn't know they were streamers. But it's like, um, you know, that is just like crazy. And it's like, you didn't even have to wait to read about that on, I don't know, academics. People were watching that stream live, watching the fight happen like saying. they were there really watching that go down. Mm -hmm. They didn't need to read about it later on because they were there like live seeing it. So VR like, meets media. It really is, bro. Like people like <laughs> Aiden Ross, like for a long time, I really hated on Aiden Ross. And I was like, I don't really understand why he's so popular. Like he just acts sus and I don't really get it. But now I really understand like he's creating these viral moments like live, like he's getting people together like chess pieces and creating this almost like this real life drama and then giving people a live window into it. And it's like, once I understood that, I was like, damn, it's actually really crazy and good and cool what like Aiden and all these people are doing, doing live streams. I don't know if it's something that I've got in my repertoire because I kind of do my documentary thing, but it's mm -hmm. like, I do really admire it. I think that's like the pop in space right now that's mm -hmm. growing a lot. You also said repertoire, and I don't think you're a streamer. I think you're just smart <laughs> to be a streamer. I'm, so, I'm oh, sorry. You speak some curses. I speak <laughs> <laughs> That's fact, man. That was a perfect description of it. <laughs> like with that's a how I feel. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, and then you different. dip it. Yeah, we're all just like tagged up, scratched up, fucking block letters I'm that kid that, that meme of that Asian kid <laughs> with the pencil that's how I write I write fast as shit it looks like this mm -hmm. sorry we got way off but yeah, sorry. yeah. This, this is this is um this is I got a headline I, here real quick I'm hoping I can get your reaction yeah, to yeah. what just happened Snoop Dogg allegedly <laughs> quitting smoking weed about three hours ago. Yo, I just Come saw on. that. I just saw that before I came the here, bro. It looked like somebody died. It did. Right? It did. Yeah, it did. It's like, when the, condolences. <laughs> like when the queen died, bro. Like it was like a black and white picture of Snoop. Yeah. Just like, bro. I thought I was like, maybe he's got to be trolling, bro. Snoop. Yeah, it's like Jay Z retiring from rap. He'll right? definitely yeah, just true. drop a, a weed line. And he's going to drop. <laughs> no, he's, that's, that's what this is. Mm. I don't smoke no more. But I eat edibles yeah. is the next post. Mm. I guarantee you, and I'm calling it here today. Okay, good. So idea. you know what day we filmed this by the time, because of what, see, that's what I'm saying. He we can't film these two weeks out. He said, I'm giving up smoke. He didn't say I'm giving up weed. weed. Mm -hmm. There you go. I get, guarantee he drops an edible line with Martha Stewart. Mm. That'd go crazy. That's exactly what's going to happen. You think? He, oh, come on, how, she's how huge. How hasn't that happened? They're tripping. I, I think they're waiting for tomorrow mm. <laughs> because that's yeah, bad, yeah. it has to be what's going on that's a marketing thing if i've ever seen fake beef fake headline mm. oh to, i gotta be honest with you bro snoop's so influential man when i saw that the i biggest. was kind of i was kind of mm. like man maybe i should quit you know what's crazy i've snoop's seen a lot quitting, of people bro. have you seen this this trend on youtube for all you fools making these videos have you seen the trend on youtube why why quit smoking made me successful how quit smoking turned me into a multi-millionaire yeah. my life is like shut the fuck up i hate watching these people lie to the camera some click video yeah, shit. i hate watching it i feel like though some people just are like that and they can't get shit done if they're high like for me i find i'm a struggle that i've had periods where i take time off smoking and i always find those it's harder more difficult to focus more difficult to lock in like less relaxed less like creative you know but not everyone's like that yeah but not everybody's when i hear sm quit smoking weed i think of the average person smokes like you know join a day two joints a day maybe are these people smoking like me because if i i'm like all right oh, i could see how it helps you because you can think and you know because i just smoke a lot of weed but the average person i don't like I, you know what it's their body it's their pain well, maybe Snoop, it does help Snoop's in Fifty blunts a day for the past. Yeah, fucking I get years. that, but I'm I'm talking the terms of these these genres. I'm not saying like if you say weed smoke messes you up, you're a liar. That's not true because I know some people that should not smoke weed. Mm -hmm. You don't do shit. Mm -hmm. I get it, but you weren't gonna do shit without the weed. That was too. my whole thing. You also weren't gonna do anything. People but used to hit me with that lazy argument. I'm like, no, no, none of my homeboys. They weren't gonna be doing shit anyway. The weed was just here anyway. Mm. The yeah, weed's like a perfect a excuse. excuse for not doing <laughs> yeah. shit anyway. It's, it's like, a good excuse. Oh, it's my, of the weed. Bro, it's the opposite for me. It greases the gear. This yeah, for real, man. Smokes weed in the morning like coffee. Yeah, exactly. The powers on at five a.m. It just yeah, starts going seven hard. Days a week. It happens to me sometimes. I'll smoke and I'll be like, I'm about to smoke and go to sleep, and then I'll smoke. I'll be like, oh, it's a great idea, and I'll mm -hmm. have to go to my desk. And I'll be there for like half an hour, an hour, being like, yeah, new idea, like new script idea, like mm -hmm. get it all down. But I don't drink alcohol, so at all, never. Well, no, not never. I've I've not drunk alcohol for like four years. I used to drink, but like I don't drink at all anymore. And like I just find I don't know. I 
weed is yeah. more productive, doesn't causes it doesn't cause as much damage than alcohol does. Like what alcohol would fuck me up. Shrooms and stuff like that. I, I've tried them in the past, but it's not something I do regularly. Like what are UK shrooms like? They taste like shit too. Or worse, probably not that good. Yeah, yeah. I, I tried them. Uh, people do the chocolate. I've not had that too many times, but I, I've known people that get the like shroom chocolate and stuff, and that's meant to be good. Or like I've been to Amsterdam and tried the the truffles and stuff there. Last dumb American question: mm. Is Willy Wonka like the shit out there? I mean, I, when I was a kid, I feel like that was the shit, like the book and like the movie. Come and on, stuff it's like based that. on. It's like it's over there. Also, like. Is everything cobblestone? Because what the <laughs> fuck, man? And Willy Wonka, everything Charlie was running through was cobblestone and old brick. That's what I picture. Yeah, That's hella cobblestone. Yeah, yeah. Twist your ankle on that shit if you're not careful. <laughs> Just careful. walking to lethal. Starbucks, you twist your ankle. No on street a, On a wet day, cobblestones on a wet day, bro. You might you might lose your life. You got bland food. <laughs> bland food. What'd you say? What was it bland food? Might twist Mid-weed. your ankle. What'd you say? Midweed. Midweed. Mid-weed. Yeah, for real. Rain <laughs> every day. Rain every day? That sounds bomb. I, I don't like the sun. I want cold weather. So I wear cool jackets all day. We, we got. I mean, there is good stuff, man. I, London's cool. There's a lot going on. It's like very exciting. We got like the seaside, like where I'm from, Bognor. Like, like in the summer, like two, three weeks in the summer's popping. In what's the gonna get me to go to? Because everybody wants me to go. Everybody keeps asking me to go across the damn water and go to UK. I'm. A fr- I don't like flying, and I don't like flying over water. First off, it sucks. What is gonna get me there? What is fun to? Do? If I if I land in London tomorrow. Mm. What is the first thing I should do as a weed smoking ass fool? As a weed smoking ass fool, and I don't have to go like to. I would say the craziest would, weed dispenser. It's not what I'm asking for you. I would say don't go unless it's the summertime. That's okay. what I would say. Go in the summertime. Go in like the peak of summer, like August. Hyde Park, beautiful park. Smoke outside. Nice lake. You could go on a little like raft in the lake and have a smoke. Like that's beautiful. Um, you know, walk around all the like nice shopping areas. Like uh, we got like. Oxford Circus, like Piccadilly Circus. It's like Times Square in the UK. It's like all of those places. You go into like a nice restaurant. You go to like a cigar lounge or like just just all the like nice high end parts right in the city. There's loads of history. You can go and see like the Queen's Guard, like the guys with the horses and like the big hats and shit. Go take a picture with them. Just do all that. Obvious. You go to Buckingham Palace. Like you can you can take a tour of Buckingham Palace. Like I've been there not for the tour, but like I went to an event there and like you can go in the palace and like see where the Queen lives and like see all this history like it's crazy cool. so stuff like that's cool i was saying would you do anything that you just said uh, yeah i've done all that stuff in the summer i'd go to hyde park like as a kid or like now as a teenager or like now yeah, yeah i would go okay. now like if now like, that's the question like would you do that like yeah. if i if now if i go to london like i go if i went to like central london i'd go to like a cigar bar like a nice restaurant maybe have like a little 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 vape outside before i have some like nice food go to like a nice like classic high-end english restaurant in london like just eat hella food like classy as shit yeah, yeah. everything sounds like you're walking the, very soft <laughs> so here's the thing right british got food blazer <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah gotta have blazer <laughs> vfx it's mandatory but like the um like british food's very bland but london's got hella good restaurants cuisines from all over the world like london's very diverse multicultural there's like something from everyone for everyone like every kind of food you could possibly want I don't really go for it, but like, you know, you could go to the theater, there's hella theaters, like shows. I tell you what I would probably do. If I was going to London now, I'd go in the summer, spend the day, chill, smoke in the park, like go to like a nice restaurant or a cigar lounge, then go to like stand up comedy. Like you go to the comedy store, like any night of the week, it's gonna be fire. It's a very small, intimate venue, really fun. Like if you, you go to the comedy store in London, like sit at the front and like get picked on, that type of shit would be fun. That would be the one. That oh, sounds great. more fun. <laughs> everything you said on the back half, because I when you're describing everything, when I went to New York, when I went to the museums, this sounds is me like in the museum. New York trip. I'm walking at the same speed if I was walking down the street, like, oh, sick painting, sick painting. Sick. I'm done. There's hella museums and stuff like that. I'm not that into that, like art galleries. <sighs> That's the type of shit that like g- girls would drag me to on dates back when I, when I lived cool there. It's cool to look at it, but I'm not the guy who's like, I'm going to read every plaque. Oh, wow, 1944. My sh- that painting sucks dick, bro. Let me move on to the next sculpture or something. That's yeah. just, I feel like I'm like this. There's a lot like of that like, very like pretentious kind of stuff in London, yeah, like loads like of art shit. galleries and, and museums like and like, I don't know, most of them ain't, ain't really all that. Like for me, like the, sh- the stuff to do is like food, shopping, you go to Harrods, which is like, I don't know, that's like, I don't know, what do you guys have that's like Saks Fifth Avenue kind of like a bat there's that like a, but it's like there's just one of them in the whole country like you go to harrods and it's like famous it's like just one of the most beautiful like shopping la's buildings. fake nice 
Yeah. It's fake nice here. Like, oh, wow, Beverly Hills. There's mm. fucking drug addicts everywhere. Yeah. Oh, wow, the Oscars. It's in the middle of fucking Hollywood Boulevard. It's gross. Yeah. Like, everything's just, like, the right angle. Like, I would say, like, uh, things like, there's little details, man. Like, are homeless people way more friendly? And, like, you know what I'm saying? They might help, they might help you along along on your journey. You know what I mean? Like, they might help like you out. Like a quest? And yeah, yeah, yeah. You might get a little whimsical quest off. Uh, you ever gotten a scroll? You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you might get past the scroll from time to time. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It might happen. Yo, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm just, I, everything UK is so ignorant over here. We don't have any type of grasp or balance. So I like it really over well. here though, man. I like the American way of life, man. You guys are more like carefree and kind of like, I, I've always like been a big believer in like the American dream. Like in America, you can do anything and be anything. In the UK, we're very reserved and it's kind of like, if you've got big dreams, people are like kind of simmer down a little bit oh, shit. type shit. You know what I mean? We don't have the American dream. Like we got very, we got very strong like class system in the UK. Like uh. for you to go from being like working class to like upper class is like, no, it doesn't happen. You know, like you're, you're, if you're from like a working class area, working class background, like that's how people see you. If you're like middle class or if you're like upper class, like, you know, aristocratic type person, like you're sort of seen as separate and better than people. Whereas in America, there's a lot more social mobility. Like you can become a self-made millionaire. Whereas like in the UK, they'll kind of look down on you. You're like new money type shit. Oh, you shit. Know? So it's like, we're very old school in that way. <laughs> but if you're naked, you're still fucked. <laughs> yeah, man. It's, that's how they be Who's in the UK, your parents? Man. Yeah, for real. That's insane. Yeah, like when I went to university, man, because like I'm kind of, like my parents did okay, but I would say we grew up pretty working class in like a normal household. Then I went to university and you would meet like, sons of billionaires and stuff and it would just be like just a completely different life experience like you're just on a completely different level but it's like i feel the americans were the most open-minded like i had a lot of american friends at university because they were the most chill they were open-minded they didn't judge you whereas like a lot of the british people from like private schools and shit that i met at university they were very like looked down on me they were like oh you know you, this is like private school shit you wouldn't understand type thing oh whereas like, like the americans are like just chill man i just connected with all the americans way more how do you feel about the you guys' this prince marrying some dumb bitch from California? <laughs> I didn't know till how long ago? Maybe three days? Maybe three days. She was watching some show go suits. I go, you know that bitch married to the prince? She goes, yeah, she's an actress. I go, she's not from London? She's not English? <laughs> I thought you had to be. Now I get why they were upset. It's just some actress girl. What if she's acting like she likes this guy? She's an hey, actress. Listen, I'm, still, I'm still not 100% convinced if I'm honest with you, bro. <laughs> she's an actress. It's crazy. The th did you watch the Netflix documentary? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's crazy. It's kind of like, I don't know if you ever had time to watch the, the like the Meghan and Harry Netflix docs crazy because it's like she kind of came along and then I don't want to blame her. Like some people blame her. Some people say that blame the family and say the family kind of racist. But like she came along and sort of broke the family up and like him and her had to like go off and do their own thing. And it was crazy news in the UK. Like the fact it was like Harry was like kicked out of the family type shit. But like, how do you feel about it? Being from there and, you know, like not being prestigious and shit. And like, well, where I'm from, we don't condone that. I've always felt like uh, generally I don't care about them that much. Like a lot of people in the UK really care about the royalty. They think they're great. Some people think, oh, they're so bad. We should get rid of them. We shouldn't pay them because they're paid by funded by like tax money. Like my taxes, my high taxes are paying for them to fly around the world in mansions. And Only because... Shit. That's their family and they're the king. They basically own all the shit, basically. They own the whole thing. Like the whole country, like loads of the land in the country is just owned by the king and queen. So they're just president forever. Pretty much, yeah. Like it's it's hereditary, right? So like the son will become king. Here's the crazy thing that I, this is the thing I don't like, right? Like we have democracy, we have a parliament, we vote, we have elections, but the king is still the head of the country. So once somebody wins the election, the prime minister has to go to the palace and bow to the king and basically ask for permission to be the government and the king or the queen always says yes but that's what we got going on that's what that's what it's like i want is it cool man all right bye. you got about you literally got a bow and be like you basically like like i'm bowing to you but like well, i got voted in because the people it's the people's vote but it's still it should be yeah. an arm wrestling contest for this shit because the idea is like so, so when you guys have this is gonna get complicated but like when you guys make a law in the u.s it's like in the senate right uh, you are asking the <laughs> wrong room <laughs> <laughs> you know more about American politics, For sure. but that's what, <laughs> but that's what goes down. Like I don't know the Senate or Congress, whatever they do, I don't know fully. But like a you, bunch of fools vote. They write in the room. laws and then they agree. Whereas in the UK, we have like like you got the Senate and Congress, we got Parliament 
and the Lords. Parliament the band? No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, uh, uh, no, so like the cigarettes. <laughs> Parliament lights, you just put cocaine in the tips. Bro, Parliament's fire. They are the cigarettes you want. Anyway, um, I know. anyway, they all vote on it, but the king still has to, it gets the final say. Any law that becomes in the UK has to get like the royal assent. So the king, it's still up to the kids. The king don't like it. They can be like, nah. President has that too. It's called a veto. Oh, okay, okay. Actually, so that's I did pay attention in seventh there grade. I remember that. It's called a veto. He'd be like, yo, we passed it. President go, nah, Hell it's no. called a veto. Okay, well, basically that's the well, king. Danny DeVito. And ain't no one vote for the king. <laughs> little Danny DeVito. That's little Danny DeVito. That's what the king, that's what the king be doing. But you know what I'm saying? The Harry and Meghan thing is interesting because I feel like he kind of married her because I feel like he wanted to be with somebody that was like a LA Hollywood kind of celebrity because he's she's kind of celebrity? he's she's famous. She was famous on Suits, but I feel like, and she was like a model and all kinds of stuff. But like, he's had this celebrity lifestyle as being the prince. Like, he literally, when he was in like high school, he would have paparazzi outside his school and shit. So oh. he's dealt with all this crazy stuff. So I feel like it actually makes sense for him to go and live this LA life because he's had. He lives out here. The celebrity. I think they moved out here. They were living in like Tyler Perry's mansion for a bit or something. There's some crazy story with them, right? <laughs> Oh, then Can- okay. So they're in Canada now. They probably that's probably the best place for them. Ain't no one going to care about them. Though. You should do Tyler Perry and be like the man that brainwashed America. None of that shit's funny. I, I watched I, it. I, I rock with Tyler Perry, man. I really I don't like the movies. I, I, the movies are kind of that's lame. all I'm saying. But I feel like the business, like the the backstory of the business, because those movies they are not really for us. They're like for like kids in a way, or like kids. They're just for. People I watched it. I'm like, I've seen Miss Doubtfire. Miss Doubtfire is hilarious. This is not Mrs. Doubtfire. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's all it's not. My grandma loved Tyler Perry movies for some reason. She always watched them. Like Medea and Shirley. Yeah, yeah Medea no, goes no. to church and whatever the fuck it's called. It was like Mary Steen Bears. So and so goes to the mall. Uh, so and so. That's how it felt <laughs> like. Ernest. Yes, Ernest goes to camp. <laughs> it was just plug and play. Uh-huh. Yeah. But he's like running things in Atlanta now, right? He's got like some crazy film studio, like Tyler Perry. I think they say he's a billionaire now. He a billionaire off the, off Medea, bro. A billionaire, and crazy. He plays Medea. Yeah. So he's the most successful actor of all time. He's a billionaire, and he plays the part of his movies and directs them. Yeah, I'm that's assuming. crazy. I think he does direct them. Yeah. This and man's he a like owns the studio as well, bro. He's like involved at every level. I I take everything back about Brainwash. That guy is just an entrepreneur. I watched a good interview with Tyler Perry the other day, man. It really it inspired cool? me. Yeah, it's like we're hearing him just talk candidly, like about all his ups and downs and his success. I was, I, I never really knew that much about him, but I was like, oh, I kind of res- really respect this guy. Like, if he's a billionaire, sir, I take it all back. You're crushing on so many different levels. That's little. That's Has hard. he done a bunch of other shit outside of Midi? I'm sure he's had. Probably, he probably produces a lot of I movies. Think he, I think on the business side, he built a bunch of studios. I think I saw this interview and he's talking about like when he leased his first studio, he was like in so much debt and he nearly didn't do it and he was like I had to trust the process and now he's got like one of the biggest studios in Atlanta and is like Damn. a billionaire and mm-hmm. but hearing his story I didn't know half of the stuff that he was involved in I was like I was like damn I really respect this dude like bro is inspiring I'd mm-hmm. recommend like Tyler Berry man the Medea you feel like this guy's dumb because he's doing the Medea thing but then you actually look into it you're like damn he's kind of smart mm-hmm. really well, I've seen Nutty Professor I've already seen a guy play a different person in a fat suit mm-hmm. and i was i never watched my grandma watched my like, i'm i think it's not for me i didn't realize all this other stuff that's fucking awesome it's funny though how these same ideas just keep happening generation after generation keep like going. the eddie murphy thing just gets remade and yeah. it's like a whole a new generation of people prefer, like prefer that and then just learn this new version of it you know some next dude is gonna do it as well probably in like 30 years will be dressing up as grandma again no nah, i hear my characters. little my nine-year-old boy walking around hi my name is he, like all the mm. little quotes are just little tiktok the 90s are coming now. back too though oh yeah they a lot of back. it and tiktok is really bringing back older shit mm. yeah, yeah a lot of this I've retro so i see a lot of these yeah. nostalgia pages on instagram of like i'm just like oh i remember that oh, yeah my old, oh damn oh, bro, i'm old bro. now yeah the 2000s ones and when i see the stuff like being a kid in the 2000s i'm just like Man, that's just that's how it was. I remember those toys, man. We were just talking about Tamagotchis the other day. Mm. I would kill mine. I'd overfeed it and just die. Did you have Tamagotchis out there? Little yeah, thing. we had Tamagotchis. Oh. Yeah, yeah, hell yeah, hell yeah. Did you guys ever have? Uh, did you guys ever have Talk Boys? The little tape recorder thing. Oh yeah. You still oh, like they use that? Talk wow. Boys. I think they were called Talk Boys or like. Yeah, yeah, I think Kevin like. McAllister had. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Bro, I used to like record little freestyles in that when I was a kid, mm. man. That was bro, little rap shows. I was like recording Eminem off the off the radio and shit. Mm. Mm. It's crazy, bro. I Those used, things slap. Me and my sister used to do VHS, and we would mm. record live TV and clips. Yeah, hell yeah. So we'd have oh, sick ass commercial, bam! The new MTV uh, 
world release of something with TRL. Bam! Sick ass uh, Dexter's Lab. It was like a. Well, you a were recording tape. the commercials, not the shows. Sick, no, if we wanted a sick commercial, oh, okay. I love this. We're on Cartoon Network. Oh, okay, yeah. You know, Nickelodeon, like, oh, I love that commercial. Oh, mm. sick. All right, stop. And then it'd be Missy Elliott out of nowhere. Uh-huh. It was sick, dude. My sister had some of those They were fucking tight. She made a whole commercials one, which was dumb. But that's basically what YouTube videos are, like 90s commercials for two hours. There's a few channels, I've forgotten the name of it now, but my, my homie was showing me this channel the other day, and it's basically a doc, it's like my channel, like a documentary channel, but they make documentaries about like lost media. So like old VHS tapes from the 80s and like old TV shows that have been forgotten and then like breaking down all the like crazy history behind mm. these shows and stuff. I've forgotten the name of it. That's interesting. People will be able to find there's, it. But. There's so much, there's so much there to like pull from. Anybody that's gonna do all the research for me, I wanna watch that. Yeah. But yeah, I want to know about that. I am not researching that shit. And I'll just watch your channel. Like all this, I never heard of that rapper. But if that's, here we go. That's the good thing. I feel like that's what I'm doing. Is it's like if you wanted to learn everything about King Von before me, you would have to spend three months re- doing all the research. Or just be an out. active fan that's on yeah. everything for, since the beginning. Yeah, I'm Which like making hard. that information like available for everyone, and just like you can become a super fan in like four hours and like learn everything, and then you're gonna be caught up with me, and then we know all the same shit. Mm. Is there a Griselda video in the works? You know what? It's on my list. I've wanted to do it for a while, a but a story. Keep, other stuff keeps coming up, but I definitely want to cover it. I know I get it requested so many. There's a few names like the, the Griselda one, the Mac Dre one. Um, people keep recommending me. Oh, he's that other guy. Um, for, for two Doug as well. But there's just a bunch of names that keep getting recommended, but I'm definitely going to do Griselda. It's just, Sick. I got to fit it in. There's just so many, this That's is triple. the hard thing. So many ideas I want to do and they take months. So it's yeah. like, <sighs> got to pick them really carefully. Damn. I'm trying to speed it up, man. It it's could hard. very easily turn into a thing where it's like we're doing four a year. Like, that's what it's been like this year, man. I had so many slip ups this year. I was like supposed a team. to. I was supposed to do. Yeah, that's the thing. I've kept. I've been building my team. I just got like two new people. So hopefully, it's going to be all good. But it's like I wanted to do a video every month. Like I've got scripts and stuff written for new videos, but it takes so long to put together. This year, I had a lot of slip ups, so it's probably going to end up being like four or five videos this year. But next year, man, trying to get monthly. Is it hard so many Oh man. Oh, I want to do it, bro. I want to do it. Is it hard to pull short form content out of it? Cause it's like such a big story. Yeah. I, I've had a few people, I, it's been such like hit and miss with it. I've had a few people make shorts out of my video and like some of them have done well. Some of them it's kind of been like, ah, it just doesn't really like, it's like when you've got a four hour video, it's kind of like the whole point is it's like, I'm breaking everything down really carefully. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So even if you take like one minute or 30 seconds of that video, it's such a like small snapshot of what's going on that it's like, doesn't really work. I feel yeah. like a short would be better if it, if I could almost like tell the whole story in two minutes or in one minute in like a trailer, in like a trailer. Yeah, yeah, like a like in a way, it's like to give you as much information as I possibly could in one minute to tease you into the video. Yeah. But that kind of that that's then its whole its own thing, and it's like I just spend all my time working on the ne- the next video that it's like I feel like ah oh, is that really worth my time? Mm-hmm. But like maybe it would be, or maybe like I could get someone in my team to like put it together. But it'd be cool to have a bunch of shorts to like promote the video and like get people hyped, you know? Has been has Patreon been like a, a big part of the process now? Are you liking it or? Yeah, n- now it has like, uh, for a long time, my Patreon was really like an afterthought. And you know, I never really like had that many people on it or like, I didn't really give them much value. And then only over the last like year or so, it's since I did a video on like the Toronto drill scene like a while back. And that was one of the first videos where I did like, uncut version on patreon and i actually put like i put a lot of effort in making sure like the uncut version of the video was like different and it had a lot of extra stuff like so now i'll try and put like i think my last video i dropped maybe there's like 10 or so minutes extra content in the uncut version of the video and it's like obviously it's you know the swearing and the violence and the guns but also like there might just be like extra bits of information that i kind of feel like you know what i don't want to point the finger at somebody too much or like i don't want to um, I don't know, be so negative about the topic, but like maybe I'll just give a little bit more of my thoughts or like mm-hmm. a little bit more analysis on the Patreon version of the video to just be like, I don't know, to just give people that extra value and give people a bit more of a closer connection to me and like give a bit more of my take. Mm-hmm. Um, and like, I feel like I've seen the Patreon growth like slowly increase where I've been giving more value. Because before I just, it was just like, oh, do you want to just be a member of me just because you like me? Yeah. And like, no one really fucked with that. But it's now it's like, you know, here's a special version of the video just for the patrons. Sometimes I'll do a little Patreon exclusive or like, I did like four little random videos just on like little mini stories on Patreon, like a few months back that would like, they were kind of non hip hop stories and they were all stuff that I couldn't do on YouTube. So I had like, 
it was kind of like fight analysis. Like there was this one clip that was viral of like a smoke shop that got robbed and then the guy running the counter like stabbed the robbers and like chasing out the store. You see that? Well, yeah, we know all about that. Video. You know all about that, yeah. Damn, well, I did like a breakdown of that video because I found like the backstory and like, the it's crazy. Like the, a bunch of people went and left reviews on like TripAdvisor for that store being like, oh yeah, great store, but like the guy behind the counter stabbed me up and shit, like funny oh. stuff. But it was like, I found all this stuff about that story and like put together like a 10, 15 minute breakdown just on Patreon because it was like, it was it's a violent story. We've, so we've like, watched that video 900 times seen that. because I, we were convinced he's reaching for my vapes. Really? Your it it's looks your fault, just bro. like this was my you. box. It has the same font. <laughs> and I'm like, but I can't, because you know, it's kind of far. Yeah. And he's reaching for it. And when it falls, I'm like, I designed that box. That's it. That's the box. Unless someone's biting my shit. That's our fucking, that's my vape. Yeah. And I was like, oh, fuck, man. That's terrible. And then he goes, I'm dead. Yeah. Oh. He didn't die, though. They didn't. They oh, didn't shit. Die. He didn't die. They oh, lived. All right. I think they lived. Yeah. Oh, thank God, man. This Word. whole time I was like, oh, fuck, you guys dead over this? No, he, he did say that. We yeah, talked about nasty. this for a long time. I'm, I'm dead. That's the best play dead shit I've ever <laughs> yeah. heard. He's getting st- I'm dead. They were young though. I think it was like 17 and 2 or 16 sure. or something. For sure. But um but to say yeah. I'm dead while you're getting stabbed oh, is man. nuts. Yeah, it's gnarly. That's why you shoot me. Dead. It's like Stop. a Chappelle bit. It is. Remember that? <laughs> this is the key to keeping the show fresh. I'm dead. I don't want to leave any mysteries. Little <laughs> 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 crack. <laughs> oh fuck. Um well, so where can everybody find your content? YouTube, Trap Law Ross. That's the main channel. Um, I also have a second channel, Trap More Ross. Mm. If you want to get a few little extra bits of analysis, I'm going to be kind of using that channel to put more like little shorter documentaries up. Hopefully, like over the next few months, I'll have a few just little mini stories there. And I've got third channel, Trap Law Clips, where I do like stream clips. I do like streaming. I'll put clips from my main videos up there. That's just a way to like keep up with me day to day. So those are my three channels and like Trap Law Ross on Instagram, kind of update. Twitter? I trap Laura Ross on Twitter. I don't really use Twitter like that, but you like start using Twitter. I know right? what. What should I do, bro? What kind of stuff should I put? You like, could. It's hard. I I would for you. I say you post a picture of a rapper. Post a picture of someone you've done music for or an uh, article about mm-hmm. or a journal, a video. Damn, I can't talk. Right. I would say like, have you seen this video with the link? Mm. And then maybe if it's like a violent story, maybe. A pic- you can toast whatever you want on Twitter. Yeah. So maybe you could post like something a little more wild, maybe a clip from what you're talking about, and then like the video video out now. That's yeah. something like what the fuck? Someone's get this is a crazy ass video. Who is this fool? And then you click the link. Go, oh, it's a three hour documentary about it, and you're gonna get so many people at two in the morning and go, oh shit, I'm gonna watch this whole thing mm. till five o'clock. Cause that's me, and it could yeah, be you sitting idea. there with a blunt talking about it. Mm. <laughs> yeah, on Twitter, yeah. on Twitter, you can yeah. do whatever you want. Yeah, I, I see people doing little interview shows and posting like actual po- embedded videos on Twitter now. You right? can do yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, totally. I want to get on that. Yeah, you, you, we just start using Twitter. Full length yeah. episodes, actually. Yeah, we posted yeah. full length episode on Twitter. Yeah, two hour. You can video. get ad revenue on Twitter now too, right? Yes. Yeah, that's interesting. You should do it just because you are. It takes you. You're you're well spoken. Just put a caption, maybe two artists that are, have a fucking beef that you've done a video on, mm-hmm. you can take, you've done every beef on every single thing on every NBA, NBA young boy, like all the beefs. Yeah. Maybe get like five of them and yeah. put his picture with this, the story of blah, blah, blah. It can go to the same picture. That's I mean, the thread, same video. Those are all just those threads. Oh, it's going to keep going. Yeah, yeah. I think you can hit viral moments, maybe talking about, because what you're talking about, it's pop culture now. Rap yeah. is the most popular genre of music. So what you're talking about is like saying, Madonna's got a new boyfriend. Like this guy just dissed this guy. It's just as fucking popular now. It gets Mm. shared just as much Mm. because that's what's popular. Mm -hmm. So I think with you on Twitter, you can be a little more grimy. You can do a little, like, show a little more wild shit that you would not put on your Instagram. You got to blur it out, put it on Patreon. Maybe you play a clip, Mm. just full-on clip of something you're talking about, and then your caption on it. That's how it would take the direction for Twitter Mm. because you can do and say whatever you want on Twitter as long as you're not being hateful Mm -hmm. or something about, like, threatening people yeah yeah and i don't think you're gonna do that yeah that's a good idea i could put like clips some of the music clips or like even like a link go. to the song because that's the one thing that sucks of, that you can't really do on youtube is it's like i can't pl- talk about this song and play you what i'm talking about and mm-hmm. i feel it would just add so much even if it was like what i would love something i really would love to do uh down the line is create like a spotify 
podcast type thing but have it so that i like explain the history of the song and then you play the song but you the song actually plays on spotify if you know what i mean yeah, yeah. so it's like the artist can have their money like don't like don't take my video down for the yeah. song copyright and shit like, i can see that i want to explain the song you play the song get your stream yeah. and then like i'll explain the next song and then we'll play that song you can hear the whole thing and radio show in. that's, that's what i'd like be. to do yeah, yeah i'd love to do that but i haven't worked out a way of doing it yet so like maybe down the line i'll kind of Mm -hmm. get the the setup for that but i feel like that would be the best way of me doing like a podcast or something like that type of thing where i could actually break down lyrics yeah of course uh one video like what that i thought was really funny how trapler ross made 10 million dollars before <laughs> youtube what was it so you did a third person for the first couple minutes of it i'm like yeah i was like not knowing what to think and then it just keeps going. It was an April Fool's video. Oh, that's the thing. Okay. If you didn't see the date the video oh, was uploaded, right. a lot oh. of people have hit me and been like, oh, wow. Well, like, uh, <laughs> but it's like, it's like the things that I say get more and more ridiculous as the video goes like, on, I was right? A, yeah, as yeah. a child, I was a pen pal with Tupac. <laughs> <laughs> so you know what? That's an inside joke. Around that time, I basically dropped like two or three videos and I just had these little clues in it that I was friends with Tupac. And then the next year for April Fools, I did another video. I don't know if you've seen it, but it's like how Tupac faked his death. Mm -hmm. So it was basically, I, at the time I, I just had this thing. I was like, I wanted to do April Fools videos. Cause it was like, it was so easy for me to do a fake video. Like I could make fake headlines, fake pictures and shit. And then yeah. I could still make a 10 minute video. I was like, it was really fun to me as like a break from doing actual content. <laughs> so I, there's this other video, if anyone checks this out, how Tupac faked his death. And I basically take like all of the conspiracy theories about Tupac still being alive and shit. And then I basically present all that evidence as if it's real. And then I'm like, cause like, there's like a, there's footage of like Suge Knight drunk at a nightclub talking about Tupac still alive in Cuba. Like we talk all the time and shit. And it's like, that's in there. There's this crazy guy that made this documentary trying to say like Tupac's still alive. And that he actually like, they faked his death and they took him from the hospital in a helicopter and flew him out to the desert. And then he went to Cuba and all this stuff. And so like, those videos are all kind of connected of like me being friends with Tupac and like me, my fake <laughs> April Fool's video. But if you didn't see the date, you wouldn't know. But there's yeah. basically like, I don't do it anymore. Cause like back then that was when I was more doing like the comedy. Yeah, like yeah. that was probably like, maybe I was still doing stand up comedy or something at the time. And it was like, I wanted to do these sort of like funny fake videos to like, to just build up like the law around like what I do and like put more of my personality in the videos. But I kind of want to do it. I've got a couple ideas for other April Fool's videos I want to do in future, but I won't, I won't spoil the fun, yeah, but there's yeah. a couple ideas I got that are kind of like, I mean, I won't, I, I'll say this one, I won't do it, but like, I always wanted to do one where I was like, oh, me going to meet Tupac, like, actually oh, do it. That's a great ender of this <laughs> saga though. Like fly to like me, like do a vlog. Like I'm going to Cuba to meet Tupac and I was like, I could get an actor or something to like play him. But then I was kind of like, I, I feel like it's a little bit disrespectful to go all that, that far. Like making a video where I talk about the conspiracy theories is one thing. I was like, uh, if I get like a Tupac lookalike, it's, yeah, it's kind of like. What if you go and you have all these adventures, but you never, like while you're waiting to meet him, he's kind of Never like, shows. Two days pass, he never shows up, but all this crazy ass shit happens. That'd be so funny if I was like, bro, I texted Tupac every day, didn't show, man. Like, and then while you're sitting there, out. you have a biggie smallest person here walk by. <laughs> Don't ever mention shit. <laughs> and that's crazy. gonna get at 1501. Did you see behind him? <laughs> then that's the April Fool's. Like, I never met Tupac, but you did you see the biggest smallest person here at 1501? <laughs> so, there's another one of my videos. I can't even remember which video it is, but there's a video where I did a skit right at the end where I like the video ends and then my phone rings and it's Tupac. And I pick it up and I'm just like, yo, Machiavelli, what's good, bro? And it's just like, it's just this random, like, it's like after the credits, like the end of one of my videos. I literally can't remember which video that is. But there's just been a bunch of little clues over the years, like me and Tupac are buddies. Because I have this fake, in that 10 million video, I've got this fake Tupac CD that I did a fake autograph on. Yeah. It's like two Roths, like big ups from your yeah. from your homie Tupac. And I've got that framed on my wall in my studio. And hella people, when they come around my house, they're like, they're like whoa, you knew Tupac. And I'm like, bro. No. <laughs> uh, yeah, you would have been like not even two, born, right? Yeah, I would have been, yeah, yeah, I think I maybe would have been like one. I don't know, was it like 92? 96. 96, I'd have been three yeah. when Tupac died, man. That would have been weird. That's a funny little Easter egg though. But it yeah, would have yeah, been like, yo, I got around when I was a kid. I, I knew people. I, I was rocking with Tupac, Michael Jackson, you know what I'm saying? Don't ask why, but. <laughs> Jesus Christ. We brought the, the whole seas. thing full oh. back to the seas. <laughs> wow. Jesus Christ. That, on the dot. Good shit. Literally two hours later on the dot. Oh, yes, let's you go. Said it. <laughs> um, so we got to get on Twitter. Mm. 
Trap Lil Ross here Instagram Trap Lil Ross Trap More Ross Trap mm. Lil Ross Clips Did I get all that? Yeah that's it That's Ooh. the lot Pow. Yeah And do the Spotify We love Spotify Yeah, yeah I want to get it. on there man I, A lot of people have said I should just turn the videos Into like podcasts And put yeah, them up just, there I just, need to do it Just put it on yeah. As audio Just clip yeah. out the video parts I need to literally Just go and do that That's one of those things man It's like True it's, crime for guys that's what your <laughs> podcast should be called. True crime for guys. Bro, that's the thing, man. It's true crime for the streets. Mm. Or something. I don't know. True crime for guys is better. <laughs> it just sounds funny. It's kind of like a Manscaped feel. Yeah, yeah. Manscaped sponsors the whole thing. Uh -huh. True crime for guys. Doesn't mean your dick has to be dirty. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's a crime to have a dirty dick. It's a crime dick. to have a dirty dick. Yeah. All right. Sorry. That's how we. That's why we're not monetized. I don't know that's why you're that's not, why monetized, we're not monetized, but monetized, but maybe. Bro. That's why we're sponsored by Manscaped. Yeah, we are. Hey, shout out to Manscaped, man. They give me a few deals, too. Nice. Hell yeah. yeah. Um, but thank you so much for being here. What else you got planned while you're here? Man, I appreciate you having me. I've got a few, a couple more interviews that I'm trying to do. Okay. I'm going to be doing Cam Capone later on. So, so nice. you know what I'm saying? I feel like I want to join the ranks of the greats that have been on Cam Capone. Um, I should be doing No Jumper. I don't know all the plans yet. I'm kind of... I don't know. Everything's just a little. Chilling. I'm just waiting for the next phone call to come through for the back for the bat signal to come nice. up, and I'll go and talk some shit for a few hours and do my thing. But it's been a pleasure to come here, man. I've wanted to come here for a minute. And, appreciate uh, you. We made it happen, man. So it's been lit. Appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you, Marty. Anything else? We appreciate it, man. We're the first one to come in fresh out from another continent, land, and come straight to the studio, right? Worldwide, man. The most well-spoken person we've ever had on the show. <laughs> Everybody thanks you for the yeah that the audio quality of your speech. Yeah, thank you very much. But no, on top of everything, everybody go check out the videos. You don't have to be a fan of the person. I, I didn't know who Rollo was till it was done. I'm I had saying. no idea who that guy is. I'm, I mean, I haven't heard his music yet. It was yesterday. I watched that one, but still, like you do a very, very, very good job. The editing team you have is crushing it, and it's. I can sit there and I cannot believe some of these are hours long. It makes me feel like, oh, we thought we were tripping with 50 minute videos. You're going hard. And the fact that you say it takes months mm. makes perfect sense. These are dateline specials. Like that's, how I, that's how Crazy. I look at them. They are dateline specials for the people that dateline would never want to talk about. Mm. Yeah. There's the next slogan. I feel real. like that's, that's what I love, man. It's like, I would want to watch four hour video about Von or Young Boy or, you know what I'm saying? But M you won't get it nowhere. No one's doing it. Yep. You know what I mean? I wish that I wasn't me so I could watch my own videos, but you know what I'm saying? You ever I'm watch in one it. back, man? I watch them back, but it's because I know what's coming. I, because I've wrote it, I know. it's like, I get it. I'm in it. It's so weird. Like, I don't know, man. Like, watching your own pods never hits the same when you, you're there, you're in it. It's kind of like. I think I'm, I'm, I'm always, we always do the live chat during mm -hmm. the episode and we're always high as shit. I don't remember everything we talk about. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I'll be like, oh, we did talk about this. <laughs> Holy shit. And while we're in the chat, I'm cracking the fuck yeah. up. The episode's a surprise. It's always it. a surprise <laughs> for me. I don't edit it. He edits it. Mm -hmm. I go, oh, fuck, we said that? <laughs> Will Smith's gonna, not going to like us. We, we had a whole thing about you know Will Smith and the whole debacle. Oh, yeah. And we say he needs to go bang Nia Long. Mm. Openly, publicly be like, yeah, I banged Nia Long yesterday. And then everybody's like, you're the fucking man again, Will Smith. Jada Pinkett Smith, they shit. That's what I think is going to redeem him. So in your in your documentary, hopefully by then he bangs Nia Long. Feel free to use that. Yeah, feel free to use <laughs> our predictions. All right? I'm manifesting him dunking on bitches publicly because everybody right now is like, Will Smith. Yeah. That's how everybody feels right now. He always comes through, man. Though Will Smith, he does. He always right? finds you ever a way. See Independence Day, he's gonna. That was a horrible question. I know you said <laughs> Independence Day. Um, thank you so much for being. Sorry that we would never end a show, but thank you so much for being here. Appreciate you, so uh, from Marty I, Trap Lord Ross. Thank you so much. Have a oh shit! I was about to say have a dope ass day to him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm burst. Guys, thank you so much for being here. From Marty Trap Lord Ross and I, have a dope ass day. Yeah. Oh yeah, these. These Ooh. are good. Yeah, they're nice, man. They're good. I'm feeling oh, that. Oh, man. I'm I realized burned. after that first one, I'm like, damn, this thing is I'm high. Strong. That was fun, guys. Appreciate it. Good well, shit. Thank you. Right now, we're going to announce the winner. Last week on our social media, so make sure you follow our Instagram. That's a dope as usual podcast. We did a $300 gift box of raw basically the biggest gift box of raw you can think of and we said leave a comment what's your favorite product we got what across four platforms eight thousand comments of people trying to enter this and we appreciate you guys we went through every single comment and we picked the winner so congratulations we're going to start doing this a lot more often with all of our sponsors so thank you guys for entering the giveaway we appreciate you shout out to the winner 300 gigantic box of raw so remember, if you want to enter any of these giveaways, you want your chance to win, and you already watch the show, follow us on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok. We're going to be doing this a lot more often. 
Thank you so much. Thank you for watching this long ass episode. It was super fun, super informative. Thank you guys. Have a dope ass day.